Okay, so <laughs> double integrals. When we did double integrals, we did a whole bunch of work. And we said, what happens if your regions look like circles? Polar. Then we did a whole section on polar double in, pol uh, integrals over, over polar regions. And it saved us a lot of headache. You're like, no, it was really hard. Trust me. If you didn't have polar, those double integrals would be insane. Maybe even undoable. It's a word, right? Uh, we have kind of the same idea here. What, what, if, what if we have these triple integrals, but these triple integrals are over some regions that, man, they're really hard to define with just rectangular, like, planes. But they're really nice to define with, like, cylinders, cylindrical coordinates, or, or spheres, spherical coordinates. That's what we're getting into now. When you're supposed to use it, when you're not supposed to use it, and how you use it. That's the goal of today. So I want to refresh your memory. Do you remember cylindrical coordinates, how whenever we have x's, we could redefine that in terms of r cosine theta? And y was r sine theta. And z, what, what, what was z? z? Z. Yeah, that's what we did. Was 11.6 or 7 or something like that? We did a whole entire section on this stuff. And what we learned was that cylindrical coordinates are polar coordinates with a z, with a height. That's all they are, and that makes sense. Cylinders are circles with a height. That's all it is. Polar with a height. That's it. Make sense? So it says, well, we could translate our functions then. If I had a function at x, y, z, now it's a function at x, y, and z. But that also means something else. If I have a triple integral over some sort of a, th remember that these regions are 3D. That's what triple integrals are. They're, they're over regions that are 3D. I can also redefine my region. So if I did that, I go, okay, well, now I can have a triple integral. But that triple integral, now it's, it's, it's changed this function into, <coughs> well, it's going to get kind of messy. There's a lot of stuff here. R cosine theta r sine theta z but 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 wait um, that whole that whole dv thing this was dz dx dy stuff like that do you remember that or or in other words you can think of this as as dz da, where da is that dx dy. I don't know if you're okay with that one. But that, if we're talking about cylinders with a z component that doesn't change, the, the region that we're drawing is always going to be on the xy plane. It's always going to be a circle. It's always going to be defined as polar. How do you change da into polar? So, so we, we could actually redefine this as dz first, and then r dr d theta. And you go, okay, well, then what would you have to do first? Come on, everybody, what would you have to do first? Here, z, z equal, we'd have a z, function z. Let's just call it z sub 1. We'd go from z sub 1 to z sub 2. Everyone, now, what's the next thing? R, r sub 1 to r sub 2. And then we go theta 1 to theta 2. Um, but, but wait a second, does this look familiar to anybody out there? When we did a triple integral and we said, hey, let's make it Z simple. You remember doing that last section? We Let's just make it Z simple. And then the rest of it was polar. It was a polar double integral. We've already done it. It's old stuff. It's literally the old stuff. Uh, this is every time in the previous section where we went Z simple, and we got a polar region on the xy plane. Every single one. That's automatically cylindrical. Because those polar regions are circles, polar. And then we had that z height. That's it, z simple. It's the same exact thing. Only it's easier. It's easier. Here's why. In order for cylindrical to work, in order for cylindrical to work, you have to go along z first. That means there's no choice anymore. It's all z simple. That, that makes it nicer. So for your R3 simple, for cylindrical, it's always Z. Always. It has to be. And then the rest of it's going to be a polar, a polar curve or well, a polar surface on the XY plane. So that makes it nice too. So that there's no more guesswork. So for cylindrical, what's your R3 choice every single time? 
Z. Z. And then you're left with a polar region on what plane? Yeah. The only difference between what we've done and what we're doing now is in a lot of textbooks, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they do this. Ready? Ready? They go, oh no, your R has to be up here. Do it matter? Since R is independent, well, it doesn't even depend on, on it's, it's not a Z, so it doesn't even matter um, where that goes. This is the new stuff, what I had before was old stuff. Is it the same? Yes, it's, it's the same. A couple of notes that we're going to write, and then we're going to do a, a quick example. In order for this to work, you know that this has to be done in a certain order. You don't get to flip these around. And Z has to come first. So this must be Z, R3 must be Z simple first. Every single time for cylindrical, every single time. After that, we go, okay, well, um, after that, we're going to have a region. And that region, well, if we're doing R3 simple as, as Z simple every time, our region's always going to be on, what was that plan again? <laughs> sure. Always. And then it turns out to be exactly what we've done. So we're going to practice a couple times just looking at it. But I hope that you, you notice something. Since we've done a whole bunch of these in the last section, we, we've already conquered this. Okay, you, you kind of mastered this. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focused more on, uh, not focused on morons, sorry, it came out a little funny. <laughs> uh, we're focused more on stuff like mass, inertia, things like that. How, how to use that. I told you that those examples we're going to get in. Last section I said, we're not going to get those examples till now. So we're going to get them here. So let's get our, our feet wet with two examples, and then if we have more time, then we'll start another one, but I'm not sure if we'll get there today. Okay, there's our triple integral we're trying to, to do. Can you do anything with that right now the way it is? What must you know about in order to perform a triple integral? You gotta know the region. So I gotta tell you what T is defined as. And T is defined as the solid bound by that thing in the first octant. I'm not going to teach you a new technique because what I taught you with triple integrals works every single time. Uh, we choose an R3 simple and then we get a region, we draw that region and we, we choose the other ones, the R and the theta, we, we pick out what those are. So I want to do that exactly the same every time to stick with some continuity here. Let's not reinvent the wheel, so to speak, even though we're going to pull over there, kind of the wheels. Uh, let's not reinvent that. First thing we do is R3 simple, um, hey, what, uh, what would you do for, for that one? Geniuses. Yes, of course, you have to. Z simple, okay, we're sticking with the same stuff. So Z simple means that Z has to be matched between two functions of Z. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the bottom one? Zero. How do you know it's zero? What's that, what's, what says it's zero up there? That does. The first octant says that if we're in the first octant, we're, we're floating up here. Here's x, here's y, here's z. We're, we're, on, we're under this, we're over the first octant, so we're bound by the xz plane, the yz plane, and the xy plane. Does that make sense? That means that x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0 are automatically our planes that, that bind this region. Okay, so first octant means that. You get those for free. That's what the first octave means. I don't know if you're okay with that one. That, that's what that is. So uh, you tell me, what's the lower lower function for z? Zero. And the upper one, well, hey, it's solved for it. That's pretty convenient. I don't know if you're okay with, with that so far. Now, what's the next thing we do? After we do R3 simple, what's after that? 
What's our region going to be on what plane? Your knowledge of how the first octant works, that the first octant means x equals 0, you're on the yz plane. y equals 0, you're on the xz plane. z equals 0 in the xy plane. That, that's important because when you start drawing your region, it's going to limit where you're at. So if we're on the xy plane, we have these two things, and we're certainly going to be drawing this for sure. So that's going to be on here. But this is going to also play a big part of it. So let's, let's start doing this. Let's try to draw that region on the xy plane. Um, in this case, if we're, please listen, I told you there's a, that a lot of times when you're bound by two functions, you do an intersection. Do you remember to, do it, talking about that? You do an intersection of them. Here, the intersection is this function onto the xy plane. That is the intersection. So basically, you just got to draw the picture at z equals 0 on the xy plane. Does that make sense to you guys? So here we go. Okay, on the xy plane, we got z equals 4 minus x squared minus y squared. That's great. But on the xy plane, where that intersects that, where that intersects z equals 0, is at z equals 0. Now, this is what's so nice about cylindrical coordinates. Once you deal with z simple, you should have a very easy polar region to, to deal with. Is that a very easy polar region? Explain how. What's that going to give you? I'm sorry, you said radius of what? Let's talk about something for a minute before we get too crazy on this, okay? Do not set up your polar region yet. These things are very, very relevant. If you think about something on the first octant, the first octant is this guy here, bound by the xz, yz, and xy planes. It's this little first thing right here, which means if you're looking down on top of it, what quadrant? does the first octant hover over the first one. You can't go outside of that. That's why I'm telling you to draw this stuff. Because if you have x equals 0, y equals 0, you go, oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. x equals 0, that's the y-axis. And y equals 0, that's the x-axis. That shows you what region you have. Is this thing a full circle? No, it's just in the first quadrant because we were defined as being in the first octant. Show if you're okay with, with that one. All right, so this stuff, no, not that. Not that. I'm just in this region right there. That's what I need you to know. Head not if you're okay with it so far. Okay, what's the next uh, next thing you would do? What's that one? Next thing. Okay, let's change it to polar. Can you change that to polar? So every single time we do this with cylindrical, we're going to get a Z. But z simple, and then we got to change everything into polar. So here we're going to have r squared equals 4, r equals 2. Well, that's redefined this rectangular circle into a polar circle. And if I'm going through that region, tell me what I'm between. r equals what? Because have any idea how far you've made it in this class? I remember the first time we just like, I don't know, what's that? And that's like, yeah, easy. It's kind of crazy how that happens, right? How about the theta? Zero what's to zero. zero to where? Pi over two. Good. Not pi, not two pi, it's a quarter of a circle. You're practically done. That's, you're almost there. We've got a triple integral. We know what z is between. We know what r is between. We know what theta is between. We have this almost done. There's only one other thing we have to do. With cylindrical coordinates, you change everything except z's into r's and theta's. So we're going to set this thing up. Then we're going to change it. Uh, naturally, uh, hopefully you understand this. If you're doing, if you're doing dz first, and you have solved for z simple, you ain't going to have any z's in here. Does that make sense? You've solved for z. It's now going to be a function of just uh, x's and y's. So those are fairly easy to change. Let's see, where do I want to do that? Let's do it down here.
So let's start our setup. The first thing we want is uh, Z simple. So I know I'm going to be doing a D Z. I'm going to leave it up to you where you put this R for the this. If you want the R in here, you if you're the type of person who loses R, like uh, you put it over here, you're going to lose it. Put it inside. All right, that, that's my advice to you. So we're going to have R. Dr d theta. This is here every single time for cylindrical because you have a, a z symbol and then you have an r dr d theta. They're every single time for cylindrical coordinates. So I don't feel okay with that. <coughs> now, we did z simple, which means we got to have a z equals first. You tell me what's the bottom value for z, please. Tell me what is it? the top one. Let's not make this mistake. I need all this stuff to match up with my next value. So if I have z equals, it's got to be r's and thetas. That's not R's and thetas. Let's change it now. So zero looks pretty good. Minus what? R squared. Good. That's if I factor out the negative. That's x squared plus y squared. So minus R squared. Show fans feel okay with that one. Sweet. Now, now we're practically done. What's the R going from? And the theta, please. Yes or no? Yeah. Are you seeing the similarity between this and what we've just done? It's, it's the last section. It's just where you put the R is a little different. You know it's going to be cylindrical when you start it, so you go, okay, yeah, my R in, in the integrand there. Now, what's, oh, what's next? What, what else do we have? That range Yeah. That's got to be here. That's, we're going to talk about that. Do you change? When do you change it? What do you change it to? Do you change it? Yes, ultimately you do. When do you change it? I, we talked about it in the last section, but I'm going to leave it up to you. Um, I will say one thing. It, yeah. If there's no Z's in this function, if there's no Z's there, then you can change it, and you can be okay. If there's Z's here, you have to integrate with respect to Z. If you're not sure... Don't change until later. Make sense? So if you're like, oh, I don't know when to change it. Well, integrate with respect to z, plug in for z, and then if you still have some variables like y or x, change them there. Either way, it's going to work just fine, either way. So I want to see what you guys can do. Either change this now or change it later. I don't care. I'll show you both of them, but I want to see you doing that integral. Go for it. I'm going to give you a little bit of time for this. Here's your two options. At least one of these I want you to do. If you don't have any Z's in here, you integrate expect a Z first, you can change it and be just fine. So Y is going to be, well, that, that's kind of nice, right? Y is always R sine theta for cylindrical. So we go, okay, R sine theta, no problem. I still got my R, DZ, DR, D theta. Or if you're like, well, I, I want to integrate Y now. Not a problem. You keep your Y, you keep your R, integrate with respect to Z, you get a Z, and then you plug stuff in. Either way, these are going to work out the same. We'll, we'll, I'll show you in the next step. With this one, we'd have a double integral. This would give you this y times r 
And then inside here, we have a 4 minus r squared minus 0 dr d theta. Does that make sense to you? Can you guys follow the, the integration that we're doing? Or, from here, you integrate this with respect to z. And you go, okay, well that's r squared sine theta z, where z is going from 0 to this. Same thing. On this one, at, at this point, if you made it down to this far, and you still have variables that you're not integrating with respect to, like y's or x's or, or, or anything like that, this is when you would change it. So if you, if you hung, hung on to it, you've got to change it here. Don't go any further. You have to change it here. So we'd have a 0 to pi over 2, a 0 to 2, and this now would become r sine theta times r times 4 minus r squared, and then you get this dr d theta. You with me? You sure? If you did this one, and you get the r squared, you get the sine theta, and then you get this 4 minus r squared minus 0 dr d theta. Do you see that they're exactly the same? It doesn't matter. The only time it matters is if you have a variable here that you are integrating with respect to, you can't change it before you integrate. That's the only thing that I want to make sure you understand. Show of hands if you do, you feel okay with that one. Because that's a big deal. So from here on out, whichever one you choose, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what does matter is, oh my gosh. Well, what would you do? Yeah, you're going to have to. So if you distribute, uh, we get this. Either way you go. I see a 4r squared sine theta coming out of there. Minus what? R2. R2, did I check that again? R2 or the 4th sine theta. dr theta, we haven't integrated with respect to r yet, so you got to leave that in there. You with me? Is it hard to do the next step? No. No, the next step is just, uh, hey, you get some r's here, integrate with respect to r. So if we do that, we're going to get this 4 thirds r cubed sine theta minus 1 fifth r to the fifth sine theta. And since we integrated with respect to r, we're plugging in for r values. So our r is going to go from 0 to all the way up to 2 d theta. If we plug, this is so nice, I love plugging zeros. If we plug in zeros, we're going to get 0, we're going to get 0, that's all going to be gone. If we plug in 2, we're going to get, oh, let's see, that's going to be 32 over 3, that's going to be 32 over 5. Do yourself a favor. Do me a favor too when I grade your test, all right? Before you integrate stuff that can be combined, please combine it. Uh, don't do two integrals here. That's crazy, all right? That's, that's too much work. So if you've got like 32 over 3 sine theta minus 32 over 5 sine theta, you're just adding coefficients. Um, 64 over 15. Can you double check me on that one? Yeah, 64 over 15. I want to make sure I'm right though. Can you do, please do 32 over 3 minus 32 over 5? Make sure it's 60, 64 over 15? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. I got 64 over 15 sine theta d theta. It's an easy one. Just don't mess up the integral of sine theta. I'm begging you, please. What is the integral of sine theta? Negative. 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 Very good. Okay. 64 over 15 negative cosine theta from 
0 to pi over 2. Why it works. Hey, what's cosine of pi over 2, which you plug in first? Zero. Minus cosine of 0, which would be minus 1. So it's negative 64 15 times negative 1. You get positive 64 over 15. Now, what is it? What did we just find with all this nastiness? What's, what's, okay, what's that stuff? If that's a mass density function, we just found the mass of that region. That's, that's the whole shebang. That's exactly what we're doing. Uh, show fans feel okay with, with this. We're going to do one more. Um, I, I need to show you something. We're basically just going to get the setup, uh, and then I'll kind of just give you a rundown on it. Of course, it, I hope you understand this. I hope you agree with it. My idea here is to give you setup, 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 setup. As many examples as I can setup wise. I don't want to waste a lot of time doing integrals like we just did, this last one we're actually going to do, uh, because I want to give you more exposure to some different types of setups. Do you guys understand the, the concept of that? That's what I want. So let's, uh, let's try one more. Then we're going to call it a date. So let's find the volume volume of the region T, where T is defined like this. Find the volume of that region where we're talking about the solid bound by those two functions. We're going to do this with cylindrical. So the first thing we're going to do, what's the first thing you do with any triple integral? Z with cylindrical. Z simple. Let's do a Z simple. So our R3 simple is going to be Z simple. Also, just keep this in the back of your mind. Am I giving you a function to integrate? So if I want you to find the volume, do you remember that the volume is going to be a triple integral over the region? dv. Do you remember that? So this is kind of an easier well, easier integral. All we're doing is going to be integrating 1 dv. That gives us volume of that 3D region. We've talked about that before. You guys okay with that idea? So let's go to the step. Number one, R3 simple every time. And for cylindrical, we're going to talk about z simple. Hey, what has to happen for us to do a z simple here? What's going to happen? We gotta have it solved for z because you're gonna have to mash z between two functions of z equals. We gotta have that for z simple. Well, this one's pretty easy. This is um, well, z equals one eighth x squared plus y squared. Doesn't look nice, but it's easy. This one, z would equal. 9 minus x squared plus y squared. Please leave it like this under square root. Do you understand why we would leave it like that, thinking about what sort of region we're about to get? Okay. Yes, yes, no. Yeah. Now, we have to match these in a certain order. We need to go small function to big function. Is it obvious to you which one of these things is the smaller and which one of these things is the bigger region? Which is the smaller one? This one is. That's the bigger one. What if it's not obvious to you? You just give up. You go, no, I don't want to do it. I give up. What, what would you do if you didn't know? If you're like, I, I, what are you talking about? What's a smaller, big one? What would you do? Do the region first. I'm going to do that this time to show you exactly how it works. So number one thing, we're always doing Z simple for cylindrical, no problem. Z's got to be matched between two functions of Z. These are those functions, but we don't know which one's biggest. Let's do the region first. Okay, everybody, what region is R going to be on, or what plane is R going to be on? Now, we also have talked about this before, but if it's not ringing a bell, I'll say it again. 
if you're ever going between two, it's, it says the region is bound between two functions. This goes back to calc one, goes to calc three. We've done it many times in here. If you had to find the area between two curves, you would first find the intersection of said curves to figure out the region. If you want to figure out the region for this solid, you first need to find the intersection that creates that solid. Does that make sense? We, we did the last section. We did a, spent a lot of time on it. It says if you find this intersection, what's going to happen here? If you find the intersection, it creates this level curve. It's putting a cylinder, collecting all the volume below, collecting all the volume above that cylinder that's going to contain both of these functions. This whole volume is going to be inside that cylinder and subtracting them. That's what the triple angle does for us. So what are we going to do to figure out the, the R? Draw both of these on there? No, no, no. You're going to have to find the intersection of that. Does that make sense? Find the intersection. So we're going to do this quickly, but I'm hoping that you see the algebra. It's just some algebra. We set them equal. So here we go. OK, um, th there's, there's actually two methods to do this. Me personally, if I had this 8z equals x squared plus y squared equals and I had x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9, I see a really nice substitution right there. Do you see it? Do anything you can to get rid of both variables and solve yourself with one. Here, between this, if I substitute this in, we get 8z equals 8z plus z squared equals 9. Can you follow me on that one? It's quadratic, everything on one side. In order, first term positive and factor. Can you guys follow the algebra down? I'll tell you one thing. It's, it's kind of not said often, but typically what we do is we consider the volume to be above the xy plane. We consider positive z's here. So we're going to ignore this one. We're going to focus just on z equals 1. You go, z equals 1? Well, that's not even do anything for me. What's that even mean? Listen, you just found the value of, c where, the value of z where these things intersect. So if you found the value of z where these things intersect, watch, watch. You found a level curve. You found where you're going to set z. Remember I'm talking about that? If you find the intersection of your two functions, they intersect at a level curve. Now, if you're following me on this stuff, I know it's been a long day. They, they, you find a level curve. That level curve has a projection on the xy plane. You're creating a projection on there. The cylinder is going to come up. It's going to cover exactly this intersection of these two region, of these, these two these two surfaces, and the volume is going to be contained in that cylinder between the two regions. The triple integral, when you plug it in, you subtract. It's subtracting the big volume minus the little volume inside the cylinder we're about to create. The cylinder happens at a level curve. The level curve here happens when z equals 1. Hey, could you plug in z equals 1? Plug it in. If I plug in z equals 1 right here, I'm going to get x squared plus y squared equals 8. Do you see the 8? Subtract 1. If I plug in z equals 1 here, I'm going to get x squared plus y squared equals 8. It's not magic. It has to be the same because that's the one thing, the one level curve where they actually intersect. So plug it in. I, I'd use this one. So 8z when z equals 1 gives us 8 times 1 x squared plus y squared. This right there, that's giving you the region. Uh, we're doing this example because it's a hard setup. And that's, this is why we're doing it. We're not doing easy setups anymore. I'm showing you the harder stuff. Ooh. Now what is that thing? Circle. Hey, what's this? What's the circle? What's the radius of that circle? Radius. That's going to be two root two. Is it a full circle? Yes. Yes, it's a full circle. Um, by the way, 
I told you there's another way. This is probably the easiest. If I have some time, I'll talk about the other way, but I, I really don't want to. Uh, what I do want to do is, is this. I want to go back for a second, and I want you to understand what order these have to go in. So, the whole recap here. Cylindrical says Z simple, you're mashing Z between two functions. If you don't know the order of the functions, you've got to do the region. How do you do the region? Well, between any two functions, set them equal. Find the intersection somehow, I don't care how. Substitution, elimination, whatever you have to do, find the intersection. That intersection at Z equals one will give you a level curve. It's gonna give you a picture that you will put on that plane every time. In our case, it's a circle centered at zero, zero with a radius of two root two. Head not if you're okay with that one. This part gets pretty darn easy. We're going to define this as polar because that's how cylindrical works. It's Z with a polar component. But we gotta do this first. How can you put these in order given that you've already done your region? Explain it to me, how? Plug in a point on this region, which is XY, right? This is XY. Plug it into both these, see which one's bigger. So what would you plug in? Zero, zero. Yeah, zero, zero. Plug it in here, you get three. Plug it in here, you get zero. That one is bigger than that one. Make sense? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done. I, I, I need to erase this to keep going. Do you have any questions on the, the solving for the intersection? Do you understand why we have to solve for the intersection? What we're doing is we're creating this intersection right here on this, this great net. It's, it's a level curve. It's a cylinder that's coming out. It's containing the intersection of these two surfaces, creating the solid that's bound in there somewhere. That's what it's doing. <clears throat> Now we get to start building our triple integral. So we've already done our z equals. Let's go ahead, let's, let's continue this. If I have x squared plus y squared equals eight, you already told me it was a circle centered at the origin with the radius of eight, but that also gives us this. It says that r is two root two, the square root of eight. Does that make sense? That means that I can redefine my rectangular coordinates as a polar equation. And so when I go through my region, I know r is going from 0 to 2 root 2. Tell me, everybody in class, what is theta going between? 0, zero to 0. Five. Five. Beautiful. We've already set up the outside two integrals. That's, that's done. Just got to worry about the inside one. So we're going to start that right now. I know that at the very end, I'm going to have an r, b, z, dr d theta. I know that because cylindrical says dz first, I need a z equals and a z equals. I know that I do dr next, so I need r equals and r equals. I do d theta last, I need a theta equals, theta equals. We've already done this one. The r goes between 0 and 2 root 2. The theta goes between 0 and 2 pi. What's the z go between? You tell me that. What's the z go between? One eight square root nine root seven. Honestly, I don't remember. I believe that you know what you're doing, but let's explain a little bit better. Can I have x's and y's any longer in here? No. You have to change them. These things have to match the latter two variables. So if I change this, this is why we leave it like that and we leave it like this. This would change to. I'm sorry, what'd you say? 1 8 squared would be less than z, would be less than 9 minus Yep. So this, the bottom function, in terms of rectangulars here, in terms of polar, is 1 8 r squared. This, in terms of rectangulars there, in terms of polar, is the square root of 9 minus r squared. So your fans feel okay with that one. Now, now, let's do, a, do just a quick recap. Intersection, great, gives you region. If you're not sure what order they go in, do the region first, plug in a point, it will tell you the order. Change your z functions into polar. Go dz, dr, d theta, match up z, r, theta. This is typically really easy. The r's got to be there for polar. What goes here for your volume? One. One.
We're just going to ba barely start it. Uh, but if you integrated this, this would go from 0 to 2 pi. We'd go from 0 to 2 root 2. And we'd go, what would this become? I need your help right now. Let's, let's focus and get this done. What, what would this become? R. What would we do? Plug in for the R or plug in for the Z? Z. What would we plug in for the Z? Um, 9 minus R squared. Very good. And then we still have a D. I gotta be honest with you, this is gonna get nastier before it gets better. We're not gonna finish it today. We're not gonna finish it at all. I just want you to see that the, uh, these can get a little nasty. If I start plugging this in, I have an R squared of nine minus R squared. This is the reason why if you can, you always have a zero here because it eliminates entire functions. That goes there, that goes there, and you distribute. Head not if you're okay with that one. Yeah. This isn't too bad to integrate. Uh, you can do it. This one's not even too bad, but what would you have to use here? So you got a U sub, you got a basic, you got a plug in for R. The zero is nice. Then you have a very basic, basic, basic. Uh, with respect to theta, and you plug in 0 to 2 pi. Um, I need you to do it on your own. I want you to make sure that you can, but does it make sense on how to do it? Show me as it does. Check this, check this on your own and get 40 pi over 3. Did today make sense to, to you? Are you starting to get a real good feel for triple integrals? Are you seeing that cylindrical is exactly the same stuff as a regular triple integral where your reach is polar? That's the main point. Okay, so as promised, some examples of how we find center of mass, uh, moments of mass, first moments of mass, maybe even a second moment of, of, of inertia using some triple integrals. We haven't done a whole lot of examples with these. I think we've, we've done maybe one. So I'm going to show you some, some things up here. I'm going to show you how we can sort of cheat at this stuff too. Uh, make it as easy as humanly possible. Just with some knowledge of what these graphs look like, we're going to do a lot of these examples through spherical coordinates as well. But right now, we're still kind of in the cylindrical coordinate systems for these triple integrals. So let's let's do a little review. Um, if we're looking for center of mass, center of mass is an order triple of a 3D region, the the space where we find the x, y, and z coordinate with these. First moment about the yz plane, xz plane, xy plane, divided by the mass of that region. Now wait a second, do we know anything about finding mass of a 3D region? If we're given a mass density function, that's exactly what a triple integral does. It finds the mass of this region given that density function. Head not if you're okay with, with that one. Also, I have one of these examples. The first moment of mass about the xy plane would give us a z measurement. Think about that. The, the distance away from the x-y plane is a z measurement, and that would give us that coordinate. If I take this thing and divide by this thing, it gives me that z coordinate. I'm only writing one for one reason, and we'll find out in just a second. And now if you're okay on the, the review of that. So we're gonna practice this stuff. We're gonna find the center of mass of this solid that's bound by this thing, this plane, and that plane. Now I wanna talk about that right now to get a picture in your head. If you were to graph this in 3D, how many variables? That means it's a cylinder. Remember section 11.6 and 11.7 we talked about all this stuff? That's a cylinder along what axis? Z. Doing this. And these things are planes. The z equals 0 plane is the xy plane. The z equals 3 plane is just right about. So basically we have the soda can. That's all we're finding. We're going to find the center of mass of this soda can. Now, in order to find the center of mass of soda can, we need a mass density function. That's practically all we need, and the ability to define our region in 3D, which we know how to do that. It's really easy. We're going to do R3 simple, get a region on whatever plane we need. It's going to be the XY plane, because with cylindrical regions, we use cylindrical coordinates. Hey, no big surprise. So we're going to find that, but we do need a mass density function. Now, this is where this is why we're doing this example, because sometimes these problems just blow your minds up, where they say things like, uh, find the center of mass and solve blah, 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 where the mass density at a point 
is directly proportional to the point's distance from the xy plane, or something like that. Those are hard to get your head around. So let, let's think about this for a second. If I told you I want to measure the point's distance from the xy plane, what variable is that? Z. Z. It's basically saying the mass density is directly to proportional to the z component of any point. That's all that's happening. Think about that. The distance from the xy plane, this is literally what z means. It's just the height above the plane. Does that make sense to you? So this is just z. That's all. OK, well, so if the mass density function is directly proportional. What directly proportional means? Back from your, your math C day, or your intermediate algebra days, if you want to go back and watch intermediate algebra section 8.4, we talk about directly proportional and inversely proportional. And all it means is that you have a constant, a variation, times your variable. So if our mass density, mass density, that's this, at any point, that's this, is directly proportional. If you think, just think this in your head, directly proportional equals k times. Directly proportional equals constant times. k times the distance, the point's distance from the xy plane. Look, look at the board. If that's your point, the point's distance from the xy plane is literally z. The mass density is directly proportional to the distance from the xy plane. The mass density is directly proportional, k times z. That's all that we need. So if you're okay with that one. Now the k is going to get a little weird. Like, what do we do with the k? Treat k like any other constant. Just leave it in there. It's not even going to be affected by all our integration. You just leave it. And now if you're okay with that one. We're not even going to have to solve for k. I'll show you why not as we go through the problem. The key here was finding out this idea that the mass density is directly proportional k times and what this means, the distance from the xy plane is z. Mass density, direct proportional to z. So hands will okay with that one. So let's go ahead and let's start finding the mass. Now, everyone in class right now, what do we need to find the mass of a 3D region? What is it? All I hear is What do we need to find the mass of a 3D region? We have a mass density function. What else do we need? A triple integral. We need to be able to define that. So let's start setting up our triple integral. This is going to be no surprise. Everyone in class right now, what do we do to set up a triple integral? What do we do? R3 simple. R3 simple. Now we're in cylindrical. Why? Because we're dealing with a region that is a cylinder. That's not a coincidence. With cylinders, man, it's so nice to use cylindrical because it defines your z. And then the xy plane is going to have a really simple region. That's why we do it. So for R3 simple, we're going to pick, oh, well, let, let's look at it. Let's see if you can pick. Would you pick X simple? No. Y simple? No. Z simple? Yes. Do you see why? Yeah. That's super, that's super <laughs> nice. It's not even a question. We go, yeah, you know what? We're going to pick Z simple, firstly, because, yeah, we're doing cylindrical. We have a cylindrical region. But secondly, because if I define Z simple, I need Z mashed between two other functions, and in this case, they're constants. I would get 0 and 3. z equals 0 and z equals 3. Match between 2, z equals function. So advance field gave that one. Now, if I do z simple, the r, the region, what plane is the region going to be on? That's why we do z simple all the time for cylindrical, because we get the region on the xy plane. It makes it super nice. What do we do every single time with our regions? Let's draw that. If we draw our region, this says that we're on the xy plane. The intersection of this, well, th this is just a cylinder. There's no z aspect there. I can't set them equal. This right here has no z's. So you take the only thing in the world that has x's and y's, and you put it on your xy plane. If our region's on our xy plane, and that's a cylinder, it's not varying with respect to z. It's literally just the soda can going into space. We're just chopping it in two spots. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here, that gives us a uh, what? With a radius. So x squared plus y squared equals 4. Uh, now, 
what type of a integral do we use with circular regions? What do we do? So we're combining the idea of a z height with polar regions, and we're getting cylindrical coordinates. That's, that's all they do. Cylindrical is polar with a z component. Well, that's what we have. We have a z component, and then we're translating to polar. How would you translate that? Because every single time we want to define our double integral over, over polar, we want to change these things into yeah, r's and thetas if we have them. In this case, this is r squared equals 4 or r equals 2. That right there is what we define that circle to be. So fans feel okay with that one. Okay, so let's let's keep on moving. We've already matched z between two functions as our r3 simple. Now we're going to do our r2 simple. With, with polar, we only have one choice though. We've got to do r first and then we have to do theta. Can you tell me, everyone in class, r goes between what and what? Zero, two. Zero. Perfect. And theta goes between zero. 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 It's a full circle. Should fans feel all right with that one? Can you please do yourself a favor right now? I want you to set up the triple integral that's going to give us the mass of this region. So every triple integral ever, you do R3 simple first. If you're talking about cylindrical, like you know you're dealing with a region that's a cylinder, you got to do Z simple first. It's the best way to go. Then your region's on the xy plane, you get a circle and you define it with polar. That's between two polar functions, r, and then between some angles, theta. In our case, we had a really nice circle, 0 to 2, raised to 2. And then we have this all the way around the circle. So our setup should be... dz, dr, d theta, which one comes first? <laughs> You can put that R wherever you want. I do not care, uh, but you, you can't forget the R because we are about to switch to polar here. Does that make sense? So you need the dz r d r d theta or the r dz d r d theta. I don't care. Just don't forget your R. Me personally, I, I love to forget it. So I, I put it right in there so I don't lose it. So I know that that R is there by the nature of me switching my region into polar. And then you go, okay, let's, let's start building this. If I'm doing dz first, I need z equals, dr gives me r equals, d theta gives me theta equals, and then I just go between my, my two inequalities here. z was matched between 0 and 3. r was matched between 0 and 2. Theta was matched between 0 and 2 pi. It's looking pretty good to me. Did you guys get the same setup? Just make sure your variables match. It's really all we're doing here. As long as we have cylindrical setup, we're, we're good. DZ and then polar. Do you have your R? It's a big, big idea. Okay. Now we're finding mass. What triple integrals do is they actually let me ask you. If I just did this integral right here without putting anything in there, what would it give me? That's right. Because if I integrate over just one, it would give me the volume of that region. Does that make sense? The volume of the soda can. That's all it would do. If I integrate over the what would have to go here? The mass density function, then it's going to give me the mass. So what is the mass density function that we have? KZ. That's, that's okay, so KZ. KZ. That's what this thing does. This says the mass density is directly proportional to the point's height. Distance away from the xy plane. That's the height. That's a Z aspect. And now if you're okay with that one, just leave the K. What I want to make sure is if you understand the setup for the region first and foremost, you understand the setup. Do you understand that any mass density function ever, including this one, has to go inside here? And what this is going to do is give us basically a formula for mass. For real, are you okay with it? Now, R is a constant, we're just going to hang, hang on to it. K is a constant, we're just going to hang on to it. Is Z a constant? No, no. no you have to integrate that. That's why we don't start changing those variables until we start integrating if we have any of this variable going on, okay? X's and Y's would have to change R's and thetas, but Z's don't because we integrate with respect to Z. I don't know if you understand that concept. Let's start this. Uh, again, the whole idea is a setup, so we're going to move kind of quickly through these integrals. Are you guys okay with moving quickly through them? Probably, hopefully, well, hopefully we've already started here. 
So 0 to 2 pi, yeah, we got an r from 0 to 2. If we integrate with respect to z, we're going to get this 1 half k r z squared. I'm going to put that on the back side because I know when we plug in numbers for the z here real quick, okay? You don't have to. Uh, you just don't lose any stuff. I like to organize my constants first because they're like coefficients. So this is 1 half z squared, sure, 1 half z squared, k with an r. And then because we integrated with respect to z, z is our variable. We know z equals 0 and z equals 3. It just looks nicest if we put that at the back end. Do you have to? Not really. It's just organization skills here. And then we're going to have a dr, d theta. And not if you're okay with, with that one. We all know what to do now. What do we do now? Plug some stuff in. So we're going to get this theta from 0 to 2 pi still. If we plug in 3 and we plug in 0, we get 9 minus 0. Hopefully, if I've done my math right, we get the same thing. Did you guys get the same thing, 9 halves k r? Yep. I'm not sure I got k dot z as your function of the integration. This? Yeah. So the question was, where did that come from? Um, if I'm trying to find the mass, I must have a mass density function. That's what rho has to be equal to. And that's what we spent some time finding. That's that piece. So if mass density, mass density, that's, that's what that rho means for us right now, is directly proportional, that means constant times something. Constant times what? the point's distance from the xy plane. That's the point's height above the xy, that's z. Mass density directly proportional to z. That's where it comes from. Kz is the mass density function here. Does that make sense? Is that k dot z right there, or is that k minus? K dot z. K dot. Yeah, it's k dot. Times. Just put kz. Fine. Just wanted to make sure you saw it was really multiplication. My bad. <laughs> anyway. Now, now, now it looks like k cross is okay. Fine. <laughs> now there's a space. <laughs> What's that mean? Nothing. It means freaking multiply, all right? That's what it means. That's, that's all, it, all it is. Uh, let's keep going. What do we integrate with respect to now? R. What do we do with the nine halves? Okay. Just leave it there. Or you pull this all the way out front. It has nothing to do with r. It has nothing to do with theta. It's literally just going to be in front of our integral. Even double integral, you want. Integrate with respect to r, we're going to get another 1 half r squared. So we'll have 9 fourths k r squared. And then we're going to plug in for the r. Since we've integrated with respect to r, we have r equals 0, r equals 2. D theta. Are you hanging with me right now? Yeah. Okay. I keep on going. Remember, we're finding mass here. So we're going to have an integral from theta equals 0 to 2 pi. But plug in, oh, look at that. We got r squared. That's 2 squared. That's 4. 4 minus 0 is still 4. 4 with 4. 4 gone. We get 9k d theta. Still okay. What now? It's probably the easiest integral we've had in a really long time. Just keep in mind, 9k is a constant. It's, it's just a constant of variation. Do we know it? No. Do we care? Not really. Not for the center of mass, we don't care. That's the awful list of theta. Don't erase that. Can't put that on video. Where theta equals 0. get 18 pi k. Are you okay with that? <laughs> Seriously, are you okay with it? What's the k do? It's a con constant of variation. If we would have the mass density at one point, we could have solved for k. We don't have that, so we can't solve for k. It just stays there. What I want to make sure you understand is that we just solve for an expression for mass. That's exactly what we solve for. So if you're okay with that one. Let's write that down. So mass 
of this 3D, of this soda can cylinder. Mass of that is 18 pi k. I'm going to leave that for a moment because, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find for center of mass. That's what we're trying to get. Now, I want to talk about shortcuts. I want you to picture something right now. I want you to picture this cylinder. True or false? The z-axis is going right through the middle of that cylinder. Okay? So, if our mass density is directly proportional, are you thinking? You should be thinking. At least picturing. I can't see if you're thinking. Uh, our mass density is directly proportional to the distance from the xy plane, which means as I go up, it gets more dense. However, if you think about the cylinder and the disks that are created, every one of those really thin disks is going to have a uniform mass density because that disk is exactly a certain height. Think level curves. A certain height from the xy plane. Can you picture it? Plug in z equals 1, that's a, that's a disk at z equals 1. Do you guys get it? All the points on that disk have the same height. That means they all have the same mass at every single point. The mass density for each disk is uniform. Now as I climb, yes, my mass density has changed. But the point is that for every single one of those disks, the mass is evenly spread out. I go a little higher, it's still evenly spread out. It's a little heavier at every point, but it's a little evenly spread out. Does that make sense? Now, if the mass is evenly spread out around a disk, and the center of that disk is the z-axis, what's the coordinates for x and y on any point on the z-axis? So the center of mass has to be 0, 0, comma something. Does that make sense? It's a disk, man. It's, it's, it's a homogeneous mass distribution on every disk. I will talk about homogeneous in a minute. But it means that the, the mass is evenly spread out along that disk at any given height. So at any given disk, the center of mass is going to be right in the center. Boop! Right, right on the button, man. Right there. It's going to be right in the center of that. Can you picture it? This is how you cheat. You go, okay, if I understand that the mass density is only changing along the z-axis, it can't be changing along the x and the y. And if it's centered on the z-axis, that means that the or, or the x, the x equals 0, y equals 0, it's centered at that point, going up the z-axis. Z it's just depending on the z-axis. Do you guys get it? That means that when I'm thinking about this and this, I don't even care. I don't care what that is, because I know what that is already. It's 0. I don't care what that is. That's, I know what that is. It's 0. That's why I only gave you this one, because I, I know that the z is the only thing this depends on. Does that make sense to you? Now, if you don't believe me, you're, like, you're a liar. Well, then you go ahead and you figure this out. And you figured this out, and you're going to get zero, and you're going to, trust me, I'm not going to do it for you, I'm going to waste my time. But you're going to get zero, and you're going to get zero, and you're going to divide by 18 pi k. And you're going to get zero divided by something equals zero. And you're going to get that. Do you guys have questions on, on this? So I'm going to have to erase it here in a second. And you're going to get that this equals zero. And you're going to get that this equals zero. Is this going to equal zero? No. no, because that's where the mass density has changed as long as z. That's the one we have to worry about. So we've already accomplished finding this part of it. We have the mass. It's done. We're going to leave that right there. What I want to do right now is I want to figure out this guy. The first moment of mass about the xy plane gives us a z value. It gives us the, kind of the average of where the mass density is spread across the z axis. That's what I want to figure out now. So I kind of ran into that, didn't I? So how's it going to change? Let's see. Let's see how it's going to, how it's going to change. How does this change from that? Does it look very similar? Yes. Is the region still going to be the same? Yeah. Is the mass density function still going to be the same? Yeah. What's tacked on to there? That's a little multiply, okay? So, that's a z. So, instead of doing this, we alter it just a little teeny bit. Why don't you try it? Why don't you alter yours, okay? I'm going to erase this. I'm going to change it for me, and we're going to re redo this, because you have to redo it. But can you just make the alteration, and I want you finding 
the first moment of mass about the xy plane, and that's going to give us part of the z coordinate for our center of mass. It's just a little alteration. It's where our, our region can't change. It's still the same. That R can't change. It's still polar. This can't change. It's still the mass density function. There's one thing that changes. What's the thing that changes? We have an additional Z given to us by our formula we created in section, well, was it this section or last section? I can't remember. See if you can do it. I'll give you a little while to get started on it. Um, after this one, as you guys are working, I'm going to explain what I'm going to do next. I don't have time to do a, pro a full on problem of every type of scenario you can have. But I'm going to alter this problem just slightly. I'm going to show you how that would change your formulas. Are you guys with me on what I'm talking about? That way, when you get to your homework, you're like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do here. The integration itself is fairly easy, straightforward. Uh, but altering how this stuff works can, can make a difference in, in your success. So we're going to talk about that. Is it hungry in here or is it just me? I swear I'm starving. Are you guys hungry? For real. So we have a z squared now. Yes, that's changing things. So I get a one third KRZ cubed. And z still going from the same numbers though. Zero to three. By the way, it was asked, uh, I think in the, someone asked me in the math lab, can you change around these for different types of you know, scenarios? You can, but you must make sure you redefine your region if you're going to do it. Okay? You have to do that. You can't just start switching stuff. Uh, you have to switch your, your bounds of integration and make sure it still works for your region. Goodness, uh, it looks like 20 to 9. Did you get 9KR also? Yes. Yep. Sweet. Keep on going, we're going to get a 9 halves KR squared, where R is going from 0 to 2. <coughs> looks like we're going to get 18. Eighteen K D theta. I don't know if you're okay with the eighteen K. Okay, man, the basic stuff now is kind of nice. Your setup wasn't like I'm telling you, man. The setup is the most important. It's the hardest part. It's getting set up right. Almost a non-issue. It almost gets boring. It gets too easy. You always kind of wish for easy problems, and then they're given to you, and you go, "That was, that's, I'm bored now. It's too easy." No, that's not the way it goes. Yeah, I'm lying. All right. You love easy stuff. I get it. 36 pi. I don't like feel confident. Huh? I don't like to feel confident. You feel confident. That's true. Hey, if I give you a pre-algebra test, you guys would be rocking. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> messing, messing with me. Negatives are a beast, okay? This is what this thing is. This is... The first moment of mass about the xy plane. That's what that is. Now, if we look at the center of mass, we already determined that this is zero and this is zero by the nature of having a homogeneous disk riding up the z axis. That's what we, we said. All we care about is where's the center of mass according to the z axis? That's what this relationship gives us. So the z takes this, divides by this. Can you see why I didn't care about the k? I have a K in both mass density functions. It's going to disappear for the center of mass. <coughs> Bless you. Equals? 
So our center of mass, 0, 0, 2. Now let's see if that kind of copes with our thought. Would it make sense to you if our cylinder is traveling up the z-axis that our center of mass should probably be somewhere on the z-axis? <laughs> okay, that's enough out of you. It's okay. Bless you anyway. Still bless you. You still deserve my blessings. Think about it, though. We got distracted with our blessings. Bless you all. Yes. Bless you. you. Uh, but does it make sense that if our, our cylinder is riding up the z-axis, our center of mass for a mass distribution that's the same on every disc, it's going to be somewhere on the z. Do you guys get that? Where is it going to be closer to? The bottom of the cylinder or the top? The top, because the mass is growing as we go up. That's closer to the top than it is the bottom. That's exactly what we're talking about. Should that answer make sense to you? Now, I just told you I'm going to change pieces of this problem, and I just want to focus on how it changes your setup. Are you guys ready? I hope you find this interesting. This stuff is actually getting real now. Not just random integrals that we're doing. This is, you can do things with this. Huh. What if it didn't say the mass density is directly proportional to the distance from the xy plane? That was z because z is the distance from the xy plane. What if it said the mass density of the point is directly proportional to its distance from the x, uh, sorry, the z axis? Let's try that. Let's see how it changes it. I'm changing the problem. All of this stuff is irrelevant now. The only thing that would be relevant is the way that we set up our region. Notice, the region did not change. Do you guys see that? So when I find the mass, we're still going to be going from 0 to 2 pi. We're still going to be going from 0 to 2 for our r. We're still going to be going from 0 to 3 for our z. We're still going to have an r, a dz, a dr, and d theta. But the integral itself, because the mass density function is going to change, the way we integrate is going to change. It has to change. So let, let's, let's think about what this, what this means. So if I have this center mass, okay, same cylinder, same soda can from 0 to 3, the mass density, the mass density at a point, at a point, is directly proportional. Am I still going to have a k times? Yes. yes. Yeah. Is it still going to be z? can't be, because that was the distance from the xy plane. That's what the z was. What's the distance? What's the distance from the z axis? Oh, goodness. What's the distance of something that's a cylinder? Where's the z axis on this picture? How would you say the distance from the z axis? In other words, the origin of the xy plane. Or give you that. R. R. R would give you the distance from the origin or from of these disks. Think about this it, the disks. The disks are going like this, right? The center of each disk is the xy coordinates at zero zero. The R tells you how far out we're going from that. So if the mass is directly proportional to the distance from the z-axis, the distance from the z-axis of a circle, guys? Come on, man. That's polar. That's just polar. It says the distance from here on a circle is just R. That's all it's doing. Does that make sense? It's directly proportional to R. The distance from the z-axis, this is R. Question. Does that mean that as you go up from the center, it's getting heavier? That's exactly what it means. Did you, did you hear that? It says, does that mean as you're going out from the center of each disc? Think about it again. It's still cylinder, right? Still running up the z-axis, still making all these discs. The closer we are to the z-axis, if you have, plug in some numbers. If you have zero, you have a mass of zero on the z-axis. If we go out a little bit, we have heavier, 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 heavier to the very edge, and then we have the heaviest 
part of this at the edge. Is that, that clear for you? It's weird to think about because these things are extremely small, but that's how this works. Did that make sense? Yeah or no? Yes. What would go here? Chaos. Say what? Chaos. Chaos? Chaos? And then you have an additional R. Why? Well, the distance from the z-axis is R for a circle. And we are talking about circular regions. Cool. K times R. This is the mass density, mass density directly proportional, K times the distance from the z-axis, R, of every single little disk there. And now if you're okay with, with that one, for real. Like I, I really want to make sure. Yes or, yes or no? Yes. Guys over here? What would this give you? No, I'm sorry, not the integral itself. What is this giving us? That's going to be the mass. If I wanted to find center mass, let's, let's keep on going with this idea. If I wanted to find center mass, true or false, the center of mass is still going to be 0 and 0. True or false? Think about your disks. Your disks right up like this, right? With R, you're going out and having an even mass density at every value of R. Is the center still 0, 0 as far as X and Y is concerned? Yes. It's growing outward like this, right? So it's evenly distributed at every R. Yeah, it's still 0, 0. You've got to think about the disks, though, what's going on. Here, we still have a center of mass on the Z axis. So all we have to do again, man, you're done. you're done with this. All you have to figure out is this again. So basically this divided by that. You're good. How would it change? How would I change this to that, which would give us that piece? How would I change it? That's all that would happen. That's it. Just put a Z in there and you integrate again. You'd figure out the previous triple integral, you'd figure out this triple integral, you would divide them and you'd have your center of mass. Zero, zero, comma, something along the Z. <clears throat> For real, did you get it on? Yes. Show of hands if you do. If you'll, if you'll have it. Guys in the back, yes or no? Are you sure? Are there any questions? Man, we have time for questions. I actually somewhat understand this stuff, so uh, if, you, if you have anything, let me know. Can't ask me what you just do, okay? Because we just did that for 40 minutes, if you just walked in the door. What'd you just do? No. Yeah. I know you said we're in the distance from Z axis. Is that R going to be representative from Y axis or any of the other axis? That R, because we have these circles, it would only work if we had a, a cylinder. It only worked if we had circles. Because when we put this on, picture on the XY plane and it rides up the Z axis, it's always a circle. Which means that I don't really care about x, y so much because every time I go out a little bit at r, it's intersecting the x and the y at, at equal numbers. Uh, it, it's spreading it evenly about both axes. Were you listening? It's spreading it evenly about both axes in every direction. That means the center's still zero to zero for every one of those disks. Now, how about this one? We got to move on a little bit. How about this? What if this didn't say? Proportional. We'll change your problem a little bit. Make yourself a note here. What if it says something like the mass density is uniform throughout? the solid. Okay, no exclamation point. No factorials for us. Uh, the mass density is uniform throughout the solid. We can actually wrap our head around this a lot better uh, because a lot of our solid shapes that have the same material 
mass density is uniform. They get take a take a brick of iron. All right. Typically, uh, if you have a uniform brick of iron or something, the, the mass density is uniform at every single point. It's not heavier at the top or lighter at the bottom. That would be a density issue. Does that make sense to you? It's usually uniform. Um, when, when we think about these things. So if the mass density is uniform throughout the solid, it's not proportional in any direction. It's the same every. What's the wait? What's the what's it mean when we're the same everywhere? Constant. The mass density would be constant. This is called being homogeneous. Homogeneous mass density is constant at every point. It does not change. It's not based on where you are on the coordinate plane. This is called a home. So when you say a homogeneous solid, it means the mass density is constant. Is that clear for you? A homogeneous solid, something where it's uniform, where the mass density is uniform, uniform means constant. Mass density is constant. I almost used a K for constant. Wow. My English is dropping at an exponential rate. Constant. That right there would be a constant mass density. Just equal K. Yes? If the mass density is constant, would the center of mass just be in the most central spot of the object? Yep. Yeah. Generally, so that kind of makes it well, super super nice. Um, actually, that doesn't mean it's easy to solve for because you still have to find center of mass of these things that aren't necessarily easy, like not a cube. But maybe this next example. Let's find the center of mass. Just setups. We're just setting up. It take a little bit too long to to go through. Um, I'll give you setup. I'll give you answers. But some of these things I'm going to require you to do in your own. Center of mass for the solid bound by these two functions of z, hey, convenient, uh, that has a homogeneous mass density. Right there, the first thing I want you to do right now when it says find center of mass, you're, you're dealing with mass, uh, and it gives you a solid, great, we'll do it within a minute. That's the region for a triple integral. Uh, but I want you to define the mass density function. That's the first thing we did last time. That's the first thing I want you to do right now. So it says this has a homogeneous mass density. Everyone in class right now, you tell me what the mass density, ah shoot, take a wait. Uh, the mass density function is going to be equal to, if it's homogeneous, it's going to be equal to, okay. that's it, just kidding. It's not based on any distance, not based on z, not based on r, it's just k. And now if you're, you're out of doubt. That's great. Now, guys in the back, yes, no? The only thing we have to deal with now is, well, just worried about our region, man. We got some formulas over here that say, hey, uh, we can find that, 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 Put them together in some ratios, and we'll, we'll be able to find the center mass. Yes, no, yes. with me, for sure. Yes. Are you sure? Are you sure? You sure? <laughs> Let's set up a region. Come on, hit me. First thing you do with any triple integral is. Oh, very simple. You're not as excited as you should be. This is fun, right? It's triple fun. Triple. triple. Hey, what would you choose for your R3 simple? Z simple. That means that Z has to be mashed between two functions of Z. Hey, do you guys see any uh, two functions of Z up here where Z equals? That's really convenient. What's a small one? Zero. 
That's a big one. The only other one up there. Do that because you know what we're going to do later. Um, so we match it between them. Again, if you didn't know that, if you, if, if you couldn't visualize that this thing is a downward opening paraboloid centered on the z-axis opening towards the negative z-axis with a z-intercept of 4. Can you picture that? Chapter 11. That's why we did chapter 11. So you can do things like this. Go, hey, yeah, that's uh, square, square, not square. That's shifted up 4, opening downward paraboloid. That's exactly what that is. It's intersecting this. That's the xy plane. It's creating this nice paraboloid symmetrical about the z can you picture it? I'm going to give you a way to picture it right now. If you can't, good. Man, I have no idea what the freaking crap this thing is. Okay. Here's the way you picture it. We're going to use this from now on. Check this out. If you're having a hard time picturing what this does, set x equal to 0. Set x equal to 0. Set what? Why? Not really, not why. Uh, because what happens is it will give you a trace on the part of the x, y, z plane that we care about, the one that we can actually see. So if we set x equal to 0, check this out. It's a really good way to do z simple and later for spherical, rho simple. Yeah, rho simple, yeah, we're going to get to that in a minute, okay? Yeah. Like 10 minutes. Um, it's a really good way to do it, trust me. If I set If I set x equal to 0, then I'm going to get z equals 4 minus y squared. Yeah? Are you, are you following? Do you see how useful that is? Not yet. You don't see it yet. Some of you don't. If you were to graph that and you were to pretend that was a y and that was an x, you would get a parabola opening downward with a z-intercept of 4. There, opening downward. Do you have any recollection? Do you remember, um, do you remember talking about traces at all? Where you set certain values equal to 0 and you get a picture on a coordinate plane? That'll give it to you. This right, man, that tells you, this is, this is your paraboloid. But just the trace of it on the, on the YZ plane is what that does for you. Do you guys see that? Yes. Let me show you how you can find Z simple. It's simple. The one thing you can't do, though, you can't eliminate that X. So this is a trace, but it's representing this thing. It's this. It's still this. Here's how you can find it. Go through your region from the bottom function of Z to the top. It intersects z equals 0, and then it intersects z equals that stuff. That's another way you can do it. Isn't that kind of cool? Every time. 60% of the time, just every time. That's pretty neat. Not a lot of people do that, all right? That, that's a neat little trick that you can do to figure out your, your R3 simple basically every time with cylindrical and spherical. With cylindrical and spherical. You wouldn't really do it with rectangular that we did before, okay? I gave you some of the ways to do that. Um, this works really well with cylindrical and what else? Spherical. We're not there yet, but we're going to get there. Show fans feel okay with that concept. So that, that shows it to you. So I know that. I know that's 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 great. I, I, I know that I'm, I'm z simple. It takes care of my region. All I got to do is put x equals zero. I get a trace of my region on the yz plane. I just go to, through the two functions of z. That's fantastic. Done. Now, every single time we do z simple, we have a region. What's that region on, please? Quickly. Point. What do we do every single time we have a reading for a double integral? Draw. Let's draw that. Thanks for your help, guys. I appreciate the one of us who is actually participating. That's, that makes me feel great. X, Y plane. Uh, hey, plug in Z equals zero, and you're on the X, Y plane. Does that make sense? If you want to do this, you go, hey, look at that. These two things intersect actually on the X, Y plane. Our level curve is already on the X, Y plane. If I just set... The z equal to zero, 
that means that I'm on the XY plane, that's exactly where we need our downward facing parabola to intersect, XY plane. What's that going to give us? Circle. With a radius of two. What do you do with any region for double integrals that's circular? What do you do? That's our region. Here's what I want you to do right now. Given that we've already covered all this stuff, I've shown you how to find z-simple really nicely. I've shown you that we have a circular region. What I'd like you to do now is not fall asleep, uh, but set up your triple integral for mass. Can you please do that? Our plan uh, for the next about 20, 15 minutes. We're going to finish everything I want to do about cylindrical coordinates. We have one more setup, one more example after this. We're going to take our break. We're going to come back and we're going to hammer spherical. We're going to crush that stuff. It's going to be awesome. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, it, it actually is easier uh, than this stuff. Easier than cylindrical? That's not possible. It is possible. It's called spherical and it's awesome. So much fun. And I have a really good way to teach it, which is good, right? Better than the crappy way to teach it. See, I understand crap. Whenever we're doing cylindrical, it's, it really takes kind of the almost a thinking out of our hands. You have to end with theta. You have to have r in the middle, and you have to have z first. You have to have those things. So let's uh, let's start let's start from the inside out like we always do. I know that I need an r, a dz, a dr, and a d theta. I know I need the z first. What two functions is z going between? Zero. 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 I'll take the zero. Right there. What's the other one? Four minus r squared. I love it. You have to change it. So we need this to be not this. Because this, these variables don't appear over here. You have to change these into polar equations. If you got that, you did a great job. That's fantastic. That's what I'm looking for. Show hands if that makes sense to you. If you if it did if you didn't have that, if you had the x squared minus y squared, eventually it'd come to you. You go, um, oh shoot, I have to change it to polar. That's because our, our region's circular. I'm defining my region with polar equations. I gotta have everything in terms of polar. What goes left side, just you guys? What goes here, please? We enter our region at zero at the origin. What goes up here? I max out at a radius of two. What goes here? And here? Two pi. It's a full circle. Fantastic. Show fans feel okay with that one. Right siders, you get the, the other one. Is this complete? No. What would this give you if I did the integral right from here, everyone in class? What would this give you? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Right siders, what do I need right here to find mass? Okay. A mass density function. In this case, it's a pretty easy one. Any homogeneous solid is going to have K right there. We could probably do that, huh? Could you do that? What would your first, let's just do like the first few steps. What would your first few steps be? With respect to what? To Z. That K and that R should stay there. They are constants, they're actually coefficients. With the Z, we. With the z, we substituted 0. After we substituted 4 minus r squared, then do a dr d theta. I've organized my k and my r. I don't want to forget those things. I had my z. I'm, I'm uh, substituting some functions of r.
Let's see if you were listening from a couple classes ago. True or false? True or false question. A U sub would be a great thing to do here. True or false? false. Please don't ever do a U sub if you have a power one. Please don't do that. It's a distribution concept. Distribute that. Do not do a U sub. You're wasting your time. All right? So here we have. Well, you gotta distribute, you get this 4kr, but then you integrate, you get the one half, drops it down to a two, you get r squared, that's where that comes from. Distribute this, you get this kr to the third, add one, you get four, divide by four, you get this one fourth k to the fourth, then I'd be okay with that one. That's integrated with respect to r. Then we plug in for our r, zero to two, and we got one more integral, and we're practically done. Well, if we do that, what you did you make it that far? What'd you get? I don't know what you got. Four. Four K. All the total four K? Yeah. Oh, okay. Four K. So this gives you this uh, eight. This gives you this four eight eight minus four. Combine like terms. Always combine like terms before you integrate every single time. This should be four K. Oh, the one works out like that. Are you still with me? Hang in. Last thing. Last thing. What do you do? Integrate. I'm imagining by your silence that you say, well, Professor Leonard, you integrate with respect to theta. Then, of course, you plug in 2 pi to theta. It's a fact you plug in 0. And you're going to get mass is 8 k, well, 8 pi k. Now, let's talk a little bit more. I want you to think back to this. Homogeneous. The mass density is evenly spread across this. What is this shape? What's it look like? It's paraboloid. Is that paraboloid symmetric across both the x-axis and the y-axis? Yes. If you know the picture, then you can see it. You can literally see it. Or you can draw your traces. Draw your traces. Look at the trace that you had on the board just a couple minutes ago. It was symmetrical about the z-axis on the, on the y. Does that make sense? It's also symmetrical about the x. Where's the center of mass going to be on some, on some solid that's symmetrical about the z-axis in every direction? So along the y and along the x, it's symmetrical. And the mass density is evenly dispersed. What is the x going to be? Zero. Zero. And the y? Zero. Are you beginning to see why we have these pictures in our head that we can we can think of? They save you. You're saving two-thirds of your work here, folks. Two-thirds of your work. Now, you can, again, you can do this if you really just, I love triple integrals, man. I just love doing them. You can do it, but you're going to get zero. You're wasting your time. The only one that we'd have to do, because the parabola is not symmetric about the z, we'd have to find the center of mass there. We'd have to find the center of mass there. And it's not going to be right in the middle of the z coordinates. It's not going to be two, because there's more mass of a paraboloid at the bottom than there is at the top. So it's going to be lower than two. Can you follow the logic on that? You think about these things. It's useful to get a picture in your head there. OK, let's, uh, let's just do one more. Well, we're not going to do the whole thing. I'm, I'm going to, we're going to change this. I know I'm changing a lot. I know I'm changing the problems. You might have to. Write a couple things down, but we don't have time to do all of this stuff. You guys get the, the point here. Let's let's do a 30-second recap just real quick. You guys okay on the region, setting up this triple integral with this region. Do you understand that with a homogeneous solid, your mass density is going to be K? Do you understand this one, that the X and Y coordinates for the center mass are both 0, 0, by the nature of having symmetry? It's fantastic. Then the only thing that we're concerned about right now is where we're going to change it. Can you just tell me real quick, real quick, how you would find this. Is this setup going to change? Is this going to change? Is the mass density function going to change? How? All I have to do is multiply 
I Z. That's all I have to do. And that takes care of this thing. And then you're going to integrate with respect to Z. You'll have a 1 half Z squared. It looks almost identical. You do exactly the same stuff. Uh, what this ends up giving you, just so you want, if you want to know, you work on your, your own. The, the doing integration is virtually identical. It's going to be a couple of different constants. But this is going to end up giving you, I erased our other answer. I have it written down here. 32 pi k over 3. M was, if you recall, eight pi k. With me, yes, no. Okay. That means that our center of mass, as it relates to the z-axis, is this number over. How much? High is gone. Case gone. 32 divided by 8 is? 4 thirds. So our center of mass. Zero, zero, four thirds. Again, it's along the z-axis by the nature of symmetry of a homogeneous solid. Bam! That's cool. Are you getting interested in this stuff at all? We're going to do one more. We're not going to center mass anymore. We've kind of beat that horse to death. Okay. What we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about um, inertia about the z-axis. We're mostly just focused on setup. This problem leads into spherical. Are you listening? This problem is going to lead into spherical. I'm going to give you a really, really useful way to define your R3 simple. Uh, I referenced it earlier, but I want you to really see it here. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. Um, and then we'll take our, our break. So. Are you doing so many examples about this stuff? It's because we didn't do any uh, of the inertia, second moment of inertia. We, we didn't do any of those things in the last section. They're all in this section. That's why we're getting all the practice here, okay? And they're a lot easier to do uh, when you're talking about cylindrical. That's what we're doing. That right there is the formula that we kind of created for the second moment of inertia about the z-axis. That's what we're going to find in this next example. First moment of inertia has to do with mass. Uh, how the light and it has to do with the likelihood of a an object moving about some sort of region, like in this case xy plane. We typically use those just to find center mass. The second moment of inertia that it's just a different a different concept of how the mass is relating to motion. So with inertia, we call it a second moment, uh, and what that that is is the difficult how hard it is to get that object, the region, moving about whatever we're saying. So we're, we're talking about this. How hard is it to get this 3D thing moving around this axis? How hard is it to get started? That, that's basically it. 
Uh, that's the concept here. So let's find the moment of inertia, second moment of inertia about the z-axis of a homogeneous solid. Is it important that you know that? Yeah. Yes. Bound by go any further on this problem, maybe start it, before we go anywhere touching the region or defining the triple integral, I want to talk about our mass density function because it's something that we easily forget. Don't forget to put that in there. That's important. You need that up there. So uh, this one should be, man, just super easy. What's the mass density function of this 3D solid given that it's a homogeneous solid? What is it? Okay. That's it. Okay. It's constant. That was really easy. Now, now we get to set the region. When we set the region, what's the first thing that we always do? We always do R3 simple. Okay. <clears throat> hey, you tell me right now, what's the appropriate choice for an R3 simple? Z. Z should be our R3 simple. Not only because we're in cylindrical, but this is solved for two functions of Z. And if I look at it, look at this. The level curves of both of these things are circles. Do you see them? That means that our region of the xy plane, it's going to be polar. That's nice. That's what I want. So this will be z simple. That means that z has to be matched between two functions of z equals. You need to know what the bigger one is and what the smaller one is. That can be kind of hard to do. I'm going to give you a couple ways to do that. Number one way. I hope that you're watching, man. This is going to so help you in spherical a lot, like a lot, a lot. Number one thing, you can draw it. Do, do you remember drawing the, the trace on the YZ plane? Draw that trace of both of them. L let me show you. If I, if I did that, if I said, well, if I wanted to draw the YZ plane, remember the, the X, X axis is like, right, it's hidden. It, it's just, we're not going to draw it, but it's, it, it's there, just kind of hidden. It's coming out of the board. If I did that, okay, what value of x do you need to be on the, the yz plane? Zero. Just plug in zero. So if I take this, and I plug in x equals zero, what it gives me is z equals the square root of y squared. You with me? Can you graph that? Yes. Can you simplify it? What's the square root of y squared? Y. Sort of. Um, it's absolute value, which is plus or minus y. It's, it's that. Here's what that looks like. And I'm just worried about this, just the, the above the xy plane. Here's what that looks like. This is z equals y, and this is z equals negative y. In fact, if you think about this, if you think back to your intermediate algebra days, every single time you take a root, of a power and it's even, you get absolute value. Oh my gosh, that's absolute value y. Algebra actually makes sense. What the heck? That's crazy. That's exactly what the absolute value y looks like, plus or minus y. That's it. Now, okay, fantastic. What, 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 what now? Well, let's try the other one. Let's take the second guy. If I set x equal to 0, then I'm going to get z equals y squared. Can you graph z equals y squared on this thing? How's it going to look? It's going to look like this and like that. Can you picture it? Are you sure you can picture it? You guys are OK with that. This is z equals y squared. Now, here's the kicker. If you watched chapter 11, and you, you were here for chapter 11, and I say to you, hey, check this out. Is that right there? Square, square, 
plus one knot squared, that's a paraboloid. That's an upward opening paraboloid along the Z axis that does, centered at the origin, that does this. That's what that tells you. It's an upward opening paraboloid, just like that. That, two squared, it's three squares. If I square both sides, I have all three squared, no constants. That's a cone, opening, Z axis, upward, done. Actually, it's, it's three squares, one negative, no constant. That's that's what that gives you. But that's that's kind of that's kind of cool. That's the picture of that cone, paraboloid cone. Now, if you weren't able to see, like, man, I totally forgot all my three D solid, all my three D images. You just look. I'm, I'm giving you a big hint here. Set x equals zero. Get yourself a trace on the y z plane, and then your R three simple really becomes simple. Let's go along the z axis. Oh well, wait, look. Here's our region, right? Right here, either side, I don't even care. When we enter this region, what's the first one we come to? The paraboloid or the cone? Paraboloid. paraboloid. Okay, well, the only thing that you can't do here is you can't forget that these things actually stem from these. Yeah, we plugged in x equals zero, but just to get a picture of it. Are you guys with me on that one? So this is a trace, but well, it's a trace of this. And this is a trace, but it's a trace of this. So if you're going to do this method, you need to write the entire functions out before you go through your region. I'll say, I'll say that again. It's best if you know what the pictures look like. Best if you know that's a paraboloid and a cone cutting through it. That's, that's best. If you don't know that, or if you're unsure, set x equals zero, get yourself a picture on the yz plane. I, I, I've never seen that technique but before I kind of thought of it, but it works really well. It's great for z simple and for rho simple. Not for the other stuff, but for cylindrical and, and spherical, man, it works well. Plug in x equals zero and draw, just draw the traces. And you'll tell which one's low, which one's high as you go along the Z, or as you're going out from the origin. That's for spherical. I'm kind of teaching you before I'm teaching you here, okay? You just have to realize one thing. Please realize this, that these traces stem from their original functions. You have to have those original functions down. Truly, show of hands if you understand that concept. So now we go, okay, well, we did this. We got our pictures. We now know our traces. Now we can go through our region. I know that z has to be matched between two functions of z equals stuff, x's and y's. I'm going to go through my region along the z. That's why we do our dz first, and you hit the bottom one. You hit this one first. That means that z is matched between x squared plus y squared. And then we go through here, and we hit the top. What's the top one? Top one's the top one. Was that clear for you? If you don't have at least one technique, this gets really hard because you you start guessing. And you go, I don't even freaking know what one's on top. And you can't start plugging in numbers because you don't know where they intersect. Okay, that, that's, that's difficult. If you're not sure what they look like, plug in x equals zero, draw yourself a picture. It's super useful for a spherical and go from bottom to top through the region. Just don't forget that it has to be the entire function, not just the part that you plugged in zero for. Head not if you're all right with it. There is another way. Uh, the other, there, there's actually uh, two other ways. One way is you find, well, I don't want to show you that way. I could. I, I really don't. Um, one way is you find the intersection. We're going to have to do that for our region anyway. And I'll show you how that relates to here. Uh, but that's the best way I've ever found. It's the best, well, best way I've ever invented. Uh, that's the best way to do it in my book. OK? So we've done the Z set. What's the next thing? What would you do after you do the R3 simple? Come on. Region. Let's draw a region. This counts for your R3 region. It doesn't count for your R. Because our R, oh, you know it. What's our R going to be on? What planes are R going to be on? We have to have that. Now, for your R, because we're bound between two functions of Z, neither of which is zero, 
if one of them had been zero, we just plug in z equals zero and be good, okay? Because we'd be going from zero to a function. We're not doing that. Now we're going between two honest to goodness functions of z. This is where that intersection idea comes about. When we did the last one, we literally did that. We plugged in z equals zero. It's where our paraboloid intersected the xy plane. It gave us a level curve and it was right on the plane. Here, because, and remember how I told you this, if you're bound by solids and you're like going along the z, you need to find the intersection. Do you remember talking about that? If you're going between two like real functions of z, one's not zero, you need to find where they intersect, where the paraboloid intersects the cone. It's going to be a circle. Can you picture it? You get this paraboloid coming out, you get this cone going in between it, it's going to create this circle for you. That circle creates the level curve on the xy plane. It's going to create that, that region for you. That's what you need to find. Does that make sense? So let's find the intersection. This is where I am going to give you two ways to do it. Number one way The easiest way to do this, change it to polar first. Trust me, change it to polar first. If you can change this to polar first, and you set this equal to this, and you do just a, a little bit of algebra, you get r, r minus 1, you get r equals 0 and r equals 1 and whoa. And you're done. You know right now that the r goes between 0 and 1. That's the easiest way I can show you. Does that make sense? If you, if, if you didn't, if you, if you didn't realize that, you go, oh crap, why? Now, can you draw the picture? Well, well yeah. This is x, y with a radius of 1. It's just a circle. And you're going from. 0 to r equals 1. That, that, that's it. If you didn't see that, if you don't change to polar first, your work gets a little more complicated because from here you'd have to set x squared plus y squared equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And you've got to do some fancy pants math. All right, You've got to be kind of clever about this. I don't like being clever. I like easy stuff. But if you square both sides, And to stop ignoring me back there and pay attention so I don't have to re-explain this. And you get everything to one side. And you keep it grouped. And you factor such that you get one power away minus one for this. And you use the zero product property. This equals zero. Move over here. This equals zero. This equals zero. And you get two circles. The non circle, hey, radius is zero. And a circle with a radius of one, or equals one. Those are the two ways that I can show you how to do that to find the intersection. Which one's easier? Polar choice. Polar. Because that you have to be clever. Or no factoring like I've never seen before, I mean, like crazy stuff. It's easy if you're clever, but if you're not so clever, then you go, well, that sucks. Because then you're going to start distributing all that, right? And you go, x to the fourth, oh, crap, plus 2x squared y squared plus y to the fourth minus x squared minus y squared. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Me neither. I don't know. Polar. Done. Find the intersection. That's the easiest way to go. Show fans feel okay with that one. Okay. i got to be honest with you. In the future, we're never going to do this again because we would do, we'd probably do this with spherical it'd be a lot easier to do.
Um, and we'll, I'll show you show you that. But right now we, we don't, and it's an interesting problem. So, did you guys follow all that down? Do you guys see that? It's like, okay, well this is r equals zero and r equals one. It's this. Dang, you keep doing it. R equals one. It's the same exact stuff that we got. Holy cow! Can we set up our Can we set up our triple integral now? Let's Let's do it. I want mass. Set up the mass. I've, I have these functions bound by z's. I've got my r between zero and one. I've got my theta. It's a full circle. So I want to see my setup. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not looking for mass, am I? I want that. Please give me that correctly. The rest of it's going to be so nice, but I need your setup to be flawless. <laughs> Tell me what I should have first as far as my D's are concerned. D what? <laughs> What else should be over there? Considering that our region is a circle, I'm going to do polar. Considering that, that we're doing polar, what else should be over here? R, D, R, and That means this has to be Z, this has to be R, this has to be theta. Come on, try it. Don't just wait for me. I need to see a good setup. Don't, don't just wait for me, please. Try something, even if you're wrong. I don't care, at least you're trying something. I do care, but. Do we have z matched between two functions like we want it? Are those functions written appropriately? No. You can change them here or there, and I don't care which. What's this going to become? R squared. And this? R. Perfect, square root of r squared. Let's, let's check if our paradigm fits. Z's first, Z's first. Everything else is in terms of the next variables. It is because we have a polar region. Check and check. Here, the R. What's the small value of R, please? Zero. Two. One. One. And here? Zero. Zero. Two. Beautiful. Check if you got that. Yeah or no. Now let's fill in the rest of it. This right here would give me mass of that region. Verify that. Oh, sorry, uh, volume of that region. It would give me volume of that region. What would that? Mass. That would give me mass. That would give me a measurement for inertia, second moment of inertia around the z-axis. That's what that's giving me. Are you with me? Now there's one more thing. I'm, just, I'm wondering if you see it. Do you, re do you remember that all these variables have to be all these variables? And if it doesn't involve z's, I should change it. Hey, but if we're going about the z-axis, it always involves the other two variables. If I'm going around the x, it involves y and z. If I went around the y, it involves x and z. It never involves that, that first that variable. So I can always change that. Let's change it. What would um what would x squared plus y squared, you know? R squared plus r squared. That is r squared. So our integral. becomes that. Let's give it a try. I'm going to be walking around for just a second. I want to see if you can work this thing out.
You first need to have a Z. something silly and started integrating in my head with some wrong stuff. That's what should just be Z. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Magic. Haven't you ever learned math magic? <laughs> Oh, that's because I erased it on one of them and not the other. <laughs> Yay. I don't even think you get a one-fourth in this problem. Ah, yeah. oh, crap. You get a one-fifth, though? Yeah. And one-sixth? Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> Serves you right for just waiting to see what I wrote down and copied it down. Oh, yeah, that's what I just kidding. Jeez, you guys are too serious. Now I'm all self-conscious and stuff. Man, the, the rest is just plugging in some numbers. You're going to plug in 1 to R, you're going to get 1 fifth K minus 1 sixth K, 0 to R, you get 0, 1 fifth minus 1 sixth, 1 thirtieth K. So if we're all said and done, we get 1 thirtieth K times, well, theta, but it's going into 2 pi, so theta, 0 to 2 pi, and we get I over 15K. Should be okay with that. Last little comment, and then we're done with this little sub. Then we go into spherical. So this, this, this is it. What if this didn't say homogeneous solid? What if it said uh, about such that the mass density is directly proportional to the distance from the xy plane? Would this still be K? What would it be? Okay. Distance from the xy plane. Z. If it said distance from the xy plane, it would be Z. Does that make sense? And then you'd have just a KZ right there. It'd get a little crazy. And then uh, some different integration. But that's the idea. Did it make sense to you? Is it starting to kind of be cohesive? That's, that's my goal in life, is to make this cohesive for you. It literally is. It's what my job is. So, okay. <laughs> Try to at least. Uh, so we're moving on to spherical coordinate. Well, we're moving on to a, a different way to do triple integrals that's not by rectangular, that's not by cylindrical, that's by spherical. I'll tell you right now, here's where you use spherical coordinates. When your 3D regions are defined by cones and or spheres. A lot of these regions look like ice cream cones. They can have this cone with a bubble on top, a cone and a sphere. That's generally what we do. Um, if we're not between those things, it gets a little more difficult. That's when this stuff shines, is when we're between cones, and or just spheres, or just cones. But but that's the idea. Well, I can't read just cones because it's along the, the radius there. But between cones and spheres. So when do we use spherical? Ice cream cones. Ice cream cones. Ice cream cones. <laughs> Told you this class was sweet. All right. So uh, now what you do have to is how to change from rectangular to spherical. We did this in chapter 11. This was old for us. Might need, some, might bear some remembering some of the stuff. So if you don't remember that, yeah, look back at your notes or watch some chapter 11 stuff. End of chapter 11, we talked about how to do all that stuff. X, Y, Z, R. The way that this came about was, hey, this is R. This is R cosine theta. This is R 
sine theta. That's why we get that for x and y. We also had this one, it's important. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. Where rho is not a mass density function, I know we had that five minutes ago, okay? Rho now is for, for spherical is a measurement of a point's distance away from the origin. That's where all the stuff comes from. If I have a point, rho gives me the distance from the origin. Phi is the angle from the z, positive z. R is the distance from the projection of that point on the xy plane to the origin. R is just like you want it to be. It's a polar idea. And theta is the measure of that angle from the positive x-axis to where the r lies. That's what, so theta is the same. Theta and r are exactly the same. It's the rho and the phi that we, we struggle with here. It's not gonna be super hard. I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's honestly not hard. Uh, one of the easier concepts we have. It just gets weird because you gotta wrap your head around it uh, to, to get through it. And now if you're okay with that one. Now, there is something that, that's very unique about this. Now when we translate a triple integral Triple integral across a 3D region, x, y, z, you can do them in any, any order. We found out that when we did cylindrical, you had to do a certain order. You had to do z, then r, then theta. And we got this magical little r that I proved where that came from. Now if we translate to spherical, we have a, another order. You will always go in this order for triple integrals and spherical. We always do a long row first. R3 symbol will be rho symbol every single time. Just like cylindrical Z symbol, remember that? Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Live today? All right. Uh, now it's going to be rho symbol. Then we're going to do phi, integrate across phi. Then we'll finally integrate across theta. It's always that order every single time. And now that you understand that concept. Okay. Also, you remember how like in cylindrical, you always got that little R, R, D, R, D, theta? Well, now every time we move to spherical, we get this every time. We get a rho squared sine phi added on to every triple integral we ever do. It's like the R that gets added on to a, a cylindrical every time, or a polar every time we ever do that. Now we get rho squared sine phi. I will prove this when we do something called the Jacobian in the next section. I'll prove where that comes from. Right now, I'm going to give you the idea. Here's the idea of the proof. It's very quick. It's just to get your head kind of kind of along this idea. Uh, if you took the vol, here, here's here's the plan. We're going to have this spherical wedge. It's defined by cones and a sphere on the top. It's like a little bubble. So if we took this spherical wedge, spherical wedge is defined by how far you, your arc length is in the theta direction. So that's this way how far we're sweeping out this way, times the arc length along the phi direction, how long we're sweeping out along that way, and then the depth of that, so basically the radius, uh, the depth of that, that wedge. So it's still a length times a width times a height, if you will. But it's along an arc length angle, arc length angle, and then a depth coming out towards that little spherical wedge that we create. Well, if arc length is radius times angle, then the arc, I hope you're, hope you're listening, I, I do want it to make sense. Then the arc length along theta would be this arc length we're talking about. The radius of that arc length is r. That's where that comes from. So the arc length would be radius times angle. But for here, the radius is r. And the angle is how far we're changing along theta. That's what it is. And if we're thinking about really small changes, which is what we're doing, we're going to have the change in volume. It's kind of dictated by how far we're away from the origin, our, our direction, swept out by the angle d theta. You guys okay with that? That this is the radius and this is the angle. Radius times angle gives us our length. Head not if you're okay with that one. Okay, times. Arc length along phi. Now let's look at that. Arc length along phi. Well, if I'm going this way, then the, it's still radius times arc length, okay? So, or, sorry, radius times angle. Well, the radius now, what's the radius along phi? What's the border of that phi? What's the distance of this? Rho. 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 Radius times angle would be rho times the change in the angle. 
Are you still okay with it? Yeah or no? Yes. But then also, if you think about this, where that point at is at on that little wedge is also a distance of rho. Do you guys see that? To get to the point away from the origin, I have another rho. The depth is also rho. Well, yes and no. It's, it's actually how much the rho is changing. The change in rho. It's the little increment. So when we look at it, everything that could possibly change would be the increment across the angle theta, the increment across the angle phi, and the distance from our origin. That, that's our, our delta theta, our delta phi, and our, our delta rho. Are you guys okay with that one? Our length just says, hey, take the radius times the, times the angle. Take the radius times the angle, and that's our depth. But, but wait, there, there, there's something wrong. Then I get to R's. Oh. But if R is the same as rho <coughs> sine phi, then R becomes this. Our delta theta is still there. Our rho, uh, these little, uh, rho is still rho, delta phi, delta rho. Are you starting to see it? Let's group all our deltas at the back side. Rho times rho, sine, phi. Here's a delta rho, a delta phi, and a delta theta. And if we know about calculus, when we integrate across these things, our deltas get really close to zero, and they change from deltas to d's, from increments to differentials. This doesn't change, though. This does. It's not quite a proof, but it does show you where dv changes into this mess of crap. That's why, because we have this across the uh, spherical wedge. That's where that comes from. Is this clear enough you guys understand where that comes from? It's kind of interesting. It's not magic. It, it comes from a spherical wedge idea, and I kind of just quasi-proved. It's not a legit proof, but it's enough to give you an, an idea about where this comes from. Are you guys clear? I even have the dv in it. So dv, delta v, oh no, now dv equals this, this stuff. Long story made short, every single time you do spherical, just like every single time you do cylindrical, you need R, D, R, D, theta. Now you need a rho squared, sine phi, D, all this junk. D, rho, D, phi, D, theta. It's hard to say. Uh, you need this every single time you change. Does that make sense? Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> it's actually not bad. The setup of the regions is the hardest part. I will make it easy for you. I'm going to make it easy for you to set these up. It's always row simple, and then you start doing the phi simple, and th that's not the same as interest, by the way. And then you do theta simple, and, you, and you're good to go. So um, how, what's, the, what's the easy way? I'm going to show you with an example. Are there any questions at all before we, we do our example? You guys don't look at this side. Just be excited. This, this could be fun. You're going to like this. I don't promise, but I think so. Okay, here we go. This is it, folks. Our last concept for integrals like ever. Well, besides changing, changing variables, and that's kind of a special case for next time. Hey, when do we use spherical 
<coughs> spherical triple integrals. When do we use those? For what type of regions? Cones. Cones and spheres, or both. What's our region here? Sphere. Please freaking use spherical. So hard to do rectangular with this, if not impossible, really difficult. Okay, but the same stuff I've taught you, it's universal. The <laughs> same thing we always do for triple integrals every single time is what? R3 simple. R3 simple. Only this time, you pick rho simple. Every time, there is no choice. You pick rho simple. So, let's write that. Rho simple is our R3 simple. It's always rho simple though. So what that, what, what that means is that I need to go, I need to mash rho between two functions of rho equals stuff. Well, can you do it? Yes. How? Change, change it. Change the region into rows. Well, let's see if we can do um, Hey, how much is, how much is that? Rho squared. Love it. You do have to know that, by the way. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is rho squared every single time you see it. Just like X squared plus Y squared is R squared, this is now rho squared. So rho squared is less than or equal to one, or rho is less than or equal to one. Also, we have this, I want you to write it down right now. Right now, rho is always positive. Always. Phi. is always between 0 and pi. It doesn't go past pi. It can't, because you could have get there the other way and, and quicker than pi. Theta is still the same theta that you're used to. Those are our bounds. We can't go anything past that. So rho is always positive, which means, well, well, wait a minute. If rho is less than 1, what's the smallest value rho could take and still be in that sphere? What is it? It's got to be between 0 and 1. That's it. That's our R3 simple. Is it pretty simple? Yeah. Now, I'm going to stop here. It's a really good time for me to show you this technique, OK? If you, if you don't listen to anything else past this, listen to this. If you are not great at doing this, if I don't know what you're freaking talking about, um, I gave you a technique, and we did it in cylindrical, but it works perfect here. I'm going to leave that. If you're not good at doing this, please do this. Set x equal to zero. Set x equal to zero, and you're gonna get a tr you're gonna get a trace of this 3D bubble, this 3D sphere on what plane? Do that. It will help you every time for your feet. Sorry, I, it does, but for your row, uh, and then it's 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 like a, it's two birds with one stone. I'm gonna show you. Set y, sorry, set equals to zero. You're getting this trace on the yz plane. What happens? What happens if you set x equal to zero here? What do you get? Well, you get y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to one. Can you identify what that is on the yz plane? Everybody can do that. Well, that that's, a, that's a what? Circle. Kind of. It's a disk. It's, it's, it's less than that. So it's a disk. On the yz plane with a radius of what? One. This is not in a textbook. This is something you guys are going to learn right now. Do you remember how for circles on the xy plane, r was real nice and easy? We're doing the same thing, except we don't have r anymore, we have rho. This is the picture of your circle. If you set x equals 0, you're always going to get it on the yz plane. It will let you go from the origin out to the circle, which is exactly what rho does. It goes from the origin out to your circle. That's all it does. The only thing you have to do is be careful, just like you did in polar, you can't let this stay x, y, and z. You have to define it in terms of rho. Does that make sense? So this, yes, we got the circle here, but this whole thing stems from this. This whole thing is rho equals 1 to the edge of that circle. Now, do it the same way. If I start at the origin, and this is my region here, if I'm traveling through the, like the whole sphere, I just have a picture of it, just the trace. I start here, I let my rho go from the origin out to where it reaches my function. I start, oh, I start immediately entering my region. What's the small value for rho? It's zero. 
what's the large value for rho? It's does that make sense? Are you seeing the connection that I'm trying to make for you between this polar idea and now we're just using rho? Just going from zero to rho. Now, after we do after we do the rho simple, it goes in a very specific order. Now, there's no guesswork. There's no, well, maybe I do polar, maybe I do this other thing. There's no guesswork. After this, you have to do phi simple. You have to do phi simple, which means that, well, I need to mash phi between two functions of phi equals stuff. Well, this is nice, because all I need to do is look at what the angle does. That's all I got to do. Here's how to find phi simple every time. I, man, you're going to see, the, it's going to be so cool if you really get this. Get this. If you want to find phi simple, set x equal to 0 and draw the picture. Oh, but wait. What have we just done? It's a twofer. If you set x, I love twofers. Um, if you set x equal to zero, not only does it let you define your row simple, it also shows you exactly what you're going to do for your phi simple. Just notice what phi does. Phi starts with a z, and it goes until you hit some other function. That's what it does. So we start here. How far does this travel to complete this circle? Notice we set x equals 0. We've got to trace them on the yz plane. That's, that's all it's doing. We're just following this angle around. How far does it go? Does it ever stop? No. No, but I told you something here. What's the max value? Pi. So this goes from 0 to pi. Do you guys get it? The max value is pi. You cannot go past that. I know it's a new idea for you, uh, but I, I really, really, really want you to see the idea of x equals 0 as being very, very valuable to you. Do you guys see it? x equals 0 will show you two things. It will show you rho, and it will show you phi. Why? Because rho and phi work together. They're, they, they work together all the time. Which means if I set x equals 0 and get my trace, not only will it let you go from the origin out to the function with respect to rho, but it also lets you go along your your region phi-wise, and that's very, very valuable. So you get a twofer for this one. Set so x equals zero, you get your row simple, and you get your phi simple. Oh, uh, what's the last what's the last one we gotta do? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Theta simple. Um, what do you think? You guys should know, you know what you should know. You should actually know it. What do you think we're gonna set equal to zero to get our theta simple. Keep in mind that theta walks right down here on the xy plane. <laughs> Set z equal to zero. Every time. We want the xy plane because that's where theta lives. OK, well, if I do that, if I set z equal to 0, then I get x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. Oh my gosh, what in the world is that? Circle. That's a circle. The circle on the xy plane with a radius of what? Can you tell me what the, and I don't even care about the r. Why? I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the phi. That's all, I'm, that's all I really care about. All I care about here is what, the, oh, sorry, the, the row. I got distracted. Um, all I care about from this circle is what the theta is doing. Does that make sense? So it's a full circle. What's the theta going from here? Zero. Yeah. Can you, can you do yourself a favor? I want you to set up the triple integral right now. I need to erase this. Do you guys have any questions on this stuff at all? Hopefully, it's indelibly marked on your memory after doing chapter 11. I hope. Well, that's kind of a big word for me. Marked.
These things always go row on the inside, then feed, theta's last. Theta, just like on polar, theta's last. So you always have it that way. Which means that I need a d row, d feed, d theta. At the very back end, that has to be there. You tell me right now, what should go right before this? Every single time when we're doing spherical, what goes there? Row squared, sine Row squared, sine what? Would it make a difference if you did phi versus theta? Yeah. It's a big freaking difference, okay? You make sure that you have the phi there, not, not the theta. Uh, that's a big deal. Okay, now, our row, we matched row between, all you gotta do is go down the line. We matched row between zero and one. We matched phi, based on our, uh, the same exact figure, between zero and pi. And then we matched theta between zero and two pi. Show of hands you've made it at least that far. Okay. Now, how about this? What if I integrated this right now? What would it give me? Volume. Good. Give me volume of that 3D region. That's exactly what it would give me. If I'm integrating with, across this, where this is considered to be my mass density function, it would give me the mass of this ball, of this sphere. Does that make sense? Okay, as we go out, the mass gets heavier. That's what that's doing here. What do you need to do with this? This is why I think it's easier in cylindrical. There's no guesswork. You have to change everything. You never, ever leave a variable, ever. They all change to all this stuff. So when you have your, and this is a nice one, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, you change literally everything. This becomes the square root of what? Row squared. Which is row. We get another row. You're always going to have at least a row squared. Well, typically, you have at least a row squared. So let's do this one. We'll um, we'll set up one more, and then we'll, we'll actually. I might just give you a break here, real quick. Um, let's do some things. Okay, come on, just help me out, really quick. What do we get? Four. Sine phi, d phi, d theta. So far so good? What do we plug in for? For rho, and rho's going from? Zero to Okay. Which means we get this double integral. It, it might help you, it helps me to write these things down every time so I don't get the angles messed up in my head. It happens to me a lot, uh, to be honest with you. So I want to give you that, that advice also. If I plug in 1, 1 to the 4th is 1, 0 to the 4th is 0, so we get 1 4th sine, and make sure you got this right, sine phi, d phi, d theta. So far so good, yes or no? Now you tell me, what's the integral of sine phi d phi? Negative. Negative. Love hearing that negative. Yes. And our phi gets evaluated. Phi goes from zero to pi. D theta. Now let's be careful on this one. What's cosine of what's cosine of pi? Negative one. It's cosine of zero. One. Negative one minus one gives you negative two. negative two. So this is negative one fourth. This whole thing gives us negative two. What are we going to get? It's pretty nice to me after that. We get this. Uh, one half theta, we evaluate theta from zero to two pi, and we get, well, pi. What is that? What, what's the pi that we're, we're getting right here? See what? Mass of the sphere. That's the mass of that particular sphere, given that mass density function. I want to know if this is, uh, this is getting understandable for you. Are, are you. are you getting it? Would you like to take a break now, or do one more and then take a break? Do one more. Let's take a vote. One more. We're going to do it no matter what. Take a, take a break now.
Okay, all but like. Undecided. Yeah, I know. Y'all abstain. Just like our American voting system. Goodness gracious, why don't you people vote? We have like 17% turnout. You need to vote. Okay? It's important. I don't care what you vote for. I do care. But I'm not going to tell you what I care about. Um, but vote anyway. Make your, you are all citizens. Vote. Vote. If you're a citizen. Uh, <laughs> if not, well, you know, take the classes, get there. We need more people to vote. Other voices, voices. That's my little soapbox for the day. So if you don't agree with it, well, whatever. Um, let's go ahead. Let's set up one more. We'll do one more and then uh, trudge through a couple. Trudge through. Not really trudge. Kind of fun. Kind of easy. Uh, they, they get pretty easy. Some books use region, some books use space, some books use ball, some books use sphere, some books use a lot of the cone, some books use things to describe this. I'm going to say region. Uh, we just need to keep in mind that T is a 3D region, okay? What am I telling you between z equals this thing and the xy plane? What am I telling you when I say the xy plane? Z equals zero. Very good. So it's going to be above the xy plane. You need to see that sort of stuff. Here's the next thing. If you know about your surfaces, you already know what that is. What is it? It's kind of a sphere. It's just an upper. Yeah. Half sphere because that square roots that the positive part of that function. Okay, so this is the upper half sphere. Also, the z equals zero kind of tells you that we're above that, but this is the upper half sphere. What if you didn't see it? That's right. So okay, so let's let's walk through the whole thing. Let's pretend that you didn't see it. This is an upper half sphere. The radius is one. So we're going from rho zero. To one. Are you guys clear on that one? That's what's going to happen. If you didn't see it, that's why I give you these other techniques for. Let's use those things. You're going to have to do it anyway for your fee. You may as well make sure that you're right. Does that make sense? Trust me, it's good practice. Uh, what's the first thing we do? Rho, phi, or theta? Let's do rho simple. Rho simple means we're mashing rho between two functions of rho equals stuff. I've given you a really good idea because you're going to do it anyway. Set x equal to 0 and use it twice. Once for rho, once for phi. Best thing that's ever happened to triple integrals spherically, okay? So set x equals 0. If we, if we do... If we set x equal to 0, I get 1 minus y squared. Some of you, that might jog your memory right there as to what that is. That is an upper half circle. That's all that is. So if I graph it on the yz plane, which is what we want. Now, here's a, there's a little caveat to this, okay? you got to graph everything on this plane. So, so for instance, when I say above the x, well, the bound by the xy plane, when I say z equals 0, z equals 0, that, that, that is this right now. z equals 0 gives us that line. Does that make sense to you? And then you go, okay, well, let's, let's graph the. Can you graph this on here? Could you, could you guys graph that on there? Do you know what it looks like? If you took your conic sections, uh, chapter 13.1 and 2 from section 13, well, intermediate algebra, uh, if, you, if you got that, you know that this is, well, z squared y squared plus z squared equals, well, that's, a, that's a circle with a radius of 1 centered at the origin, but it's only the upper half of that. 
So it looks like this. Truly, do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? For real? Okay. Hey, if that's, if that's the trace of this solid region, upper half sphere, can you, can you tell me where rho goes from? It's just like R. Start at the origin. Go to the function. It's just like, um, can you tell me what rho goes to? Zero to, you have to change this into rho. You have to. Because you can't leave it x's, y's, and z's because you can't integrate spherically. That's why spherical coordinates work with regions that are bound by spheres. Cones are nice because, listen carefully, cones travel along rho. That's why they're nice. All they do is they dictate what our phi does. They don't dictate where our rho stops. They just travel right along. That's what cones do. They're straight lines. Uh, the sphere dictates where we stop. Or something that we can define spherically dictates where we stop. So for us, we go, okay, this is, this is fantastic. This gave us the circle. This says rho starts at zero. It ends right here, but that must be defined spherically. You go, how do I define that, that sphere? Well, you take the whole thing and you, you go, well, z squared equals one minus x squared minus y squared. Add everything over, except the one. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. Rho equals one. Rho squared equals one, so rho equals one. This is rho equals one. Rho's traveling from the origin, zero, to one. And that's hitting the surface of that, that half sphere. Show hands if you're all right with that one. Now, the seven equal to zero does another thing for us. You use the same picture twice. The next thing we do is phi simple. And we want to match phi between two angles. It's nice, it's not a function. It's always between two angles. That's, that's fantastic. We don't got to worry about functions, just angles. But here's how phi works. Phi is always the measurement through the exact same region. I love that. But it's always from z to the positive side until you get to the edge of your region. It's always that way. It, doesn't, it never goes past pi, it never goes this way. It's always this way. So that actually makes it kind of kind of nice. You guys see how, how nice it is? You don't. You don't see it yet. It's nice. Because it's hard to make mistakes with it if you know the direction to travel. Where, where does it start? Z. Or here. Not here. That's opposite. It starts here. It's from this positive Z. Where does it stop? At Z equals zero. Well, what's the angle? From here, we're starting at zero to... Pi over two. They can get weird for some people. Are you guys okay on this one? I don't really want to do a whole on re full on recap of this, but do you guys understand, understand the concept of plug in x equals zero and you use it twice? Once for the row, once for the phi. That, that's, that's how you do it. Um, the row, pretty easy from the origin out to the function, no problem. And from the phi, from the z axis to where our region stops angularly. Now, the, the, the theta, you got to do one more thing with it. Ladies and gentlemen, right now you tell me how you find a theta. What do you do? Just like pretty much always, set, set z equal to zero. And if we do that, we graph it. So z equals zero says zero equals square root of one minus x squared minus y squared. That's what that says. Or you can even do it from here. What ends up happening is you get x squared plus y squared equals one. What plane is that on? What is that? Circle. Radius? One. Center depth? All we care about, and if you picture it, look, it's an upper half sphere. It's going to intersect the xy plane on a full circle. It's not cut or anything. The z equals zero does not cut that up. It's just this half sphere line on a plane. We're going to be going from zero to two pi. What I want to see over here from you guys, I want to see a good setup. I want to see you, well, I want to see a good setup. I'll give you 30 seconds, give me a good setup. <clears throat> I 
Wow, we only have three more examples, so we're done with our chat. Our section, that's great. I know I always get a row square, sine, phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. I know that for my row, I'm always between that first, 0 to 1 first. Then for my phi, I have 0 to pi over 2. And for my theta, I have 0 to 2 pi. Did you make it at least that far? Good, that's fantastic. What's it give you? If you integrate this right now, what would it give you? Volume. Volume of half sphere. That's all it would give you. That's it. Now, if I keep in mind what my function is, that had a y in there. Do I need to put a y right here? Should I put a y right there? What should I put right there? I don't even remember. That's why I put it on my little note card. And you go, uh, Well, I know this. I know y is r sine theta. I also know that r is rho sine phi. And that's how you get the rho sine phi sine phi. Am I right? I hope I'm right. Yeah, it is. So why? becomes this. We always get this for spherical, and then we got d rho, d, d phi, d, d theta. So fans feel okay with that. Now stop. You need to listen to this. Stop, 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 stop. Listen, listen. Put, if you have to put down your pencils, I don't care. I'll tell you what. You know that this thing is going to have a certain mass, right? It's going to have a mass. Uh, what happens a lot on these problems is that you get all this set up, it's set up perfectly. You have this row cube, you're going to integrate one fourth row to the fourth, you're going to have a whole bunch of crap, you're going to do uh, all this sine squared, whatever. You're going to do a lot of work on this thing, and what you're going to end up with is zero. The way this is set up, this integral equals zero. I promise. Zero. You go, what? It can't be zero. How's it zero? Could be zero. But here's what happens. Here's what happens a lot of times. The fact that we're going around this full circle, it's not this. This doesn't cause it. It's not the rho. It's not the phi. It's, th it's a theta, usually. 99% of the time, it's a theta. When you go around this and you have a lot of cosines in here, notice that you're going to get a cosine when you integrate sine. You're going to get a cosine up there. When, when you get, it could be sine also. When you go around this, a lot of times you go around the full circle, we start canceling out area, volume, and therefore mass. If this happens, and it doesn't happen all the time, it's like a crapshoot, you don't know on the setup. So here's my, my advice to you. If this happens and you get a lot of zeros, it's almost certainly because you, you have a, a symmetrical figure, which you do, it's a half sphere. Try two things. First thing to try, and it's okay, you do the whole integration all the way down to the very end. It'd be this that screws you up. So here's the two things you try. Number one thing, Plug in theta from 0 to pi and double it. Do you guys see how this still works? If it's symmetrical, you can do that. Uh, try that. If it's still 0, by the way, do you notice how you do everything else to the very, very end? It'd be a very easy switch to make, OK? If it's still 0, then you do, what do you think? Give up. Give up. Done. Four. Quadruple from zero to pi over two, and that generally fixes the problem. Try one of these two things; it'd be the very last step that you do, uh, and that's a way around getting zeros all the time. You go, man, what the heck? Although a lot of textbooks don't do that. Okay, they're going to give you a lot of zeros because they they they're written by grad students who sometimes don't do that. Um, no, that, I'm sorry, that's that's bad to say. But the, the solutions manuals sometimes are, and they they just get zeros all the time. You go, well, that could happen. Uh, they could. But if you're getting a lot of zeros, generally your region is symmetrical um, and, and you're canceling out volume, mass, or area. 
that's usually what happens. Question. So if we got a negative um, number for an answer two, that would probably be incorrect. Have probably. Okay. And now, and now that we do count this as like net signed volume. Okay, so area below axes, uh, below x y plane would be counted as negative. Um, sometimes that happens too. If, if we talk in total area, it's a different setup. Uh, total volume is a different setup. But we're going to take a break right now, come back, hit our three examples, and be done for today. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, three examples left. We're going to get through them. Listen, we're doing setup only because that's the most important part. That, that's all I really care about you getting. Of course, I'm going to make you do integrals on the test, but I want you to do the setup now because that is what is new for us. Integrals are not new for us. So every single time we have this, we're going to start thinking about the region. Let's think about what the regions are. If you know your, your, 3D, your 3D functions, these regions are nice. You can actually picture them. And that's what I want to get you to do. So let, let's take a look at this one. This right here, if I square both sides, I get all three squared, one minus, no constant. That thing is a cone. It's a cone centered at the origin going outward along the z-axis. That's a cone. That thing. Oh, that's easy. What is that? Sphere, sphere radius of? Two. So what this looks like is a sphere and an, uh, we're going to talk about the upper cone. A sphere and an upper cone. It's making an ice cream cone. That, that's what this, this 3D image is actually going to look like. Show of hands if you're okay with, with that. So that's cone, that's sphere. Now I told you something. If you can't figure out that our row is going from 0 to 2, that's okay. Here's how to do it. Watch carefully. Good technique. Plug in what? Zero. X equals, X equals zero. zero. It's going to give you a trace of these functions on the YZ plane. It's also going to help you do both row simple and fee simple. So if I let X equals zero, well, watch what happens. Here's our Y, here's our Z. If I let X equals zero, I get, check it out, you need to cover it up. X equals zero gives us, what's, what's that shape going to be? Circle. Radius of? Two. Right here, we're just going to focus on the upper, the upper half plane. Generally, you can you can expect that that we're just focusing on the upper half plane. It's usually the case. If I if I so that's x equals zero. We just cover that up. We got y squared plus z squared equals four. That's a radius of two centered at the origin. How about this one? If I plug this one in, I get z equals square root of y. We've seen that before. What does that make for you? Absolute value. Yeah. Or plus or minus y, that's fine too. But the idea is that we get this. Should fans be okay with it? Can you see the ice cream cone in 3D? That, this is revolving like this. That, that's, what's, that's what's happening. Uh, now, I do want to point something out. Some people get really, really jacked up on Mountain Dew about this thing and go, I can't define that in terms of, of that's horrible. You're right, it's horrible in terms of row. Think about why it's horrible in terms of row. Think about this. If I just think about my cone, my row starts at the origin. It travels outward. Is this row ever going to hit the cone? No. Never. It can't. Because those are straight lines, no matter how wide or narrow that cone gets, the row is going to travel right along. It is a value of row. Oh, well, sorry. Uh, it, it is a value of phi that row travels along. So it, it's parallel to a, to a row, if you will. That's why you can't define all these things. So here's the, here's the magic. When you draw your images, you set x equals 0, you get a circle radius of 2. Yes, you set x equals 0, you get absolute value of y. Yes. Your region is this thing that we're talking about, that thing. Remember back to your polar regions, how you, you went through this with your R, right? You didn't go to this diagonal line, because you couldn't, because your R would travel right along it. I want you to go through that same region with your row. It's the same concept. So from right here, let's take our row. Row goes from the origin out to a function of row. It's going to go from what's the small value of row? Zero. 
So it's going to go from zero to, it's going to hit this thing. Now, here's the key for you. L listen with this technique. Here's the key. You only need to redefine the function that the row actually hits. You only need to redefine the function the row actually hits. I don't care about the cone. The row ain't going to hit the cone. It's going to go from the origin out to this function. So let's look where this function comes from. Where's this function come from, the cone or the sphere? Redefine the sphere. And it will be possible if it's a sphere. Okay? It will be possible. So let's redefine this. This would be rho squared equals 4 or rho equals 2. This is rho equals 2. Did you, did you catch that technique? You said x equals 0. You draw on the yz plane. It's going to give you something from the origin out to a rho function. Uh, by the way, if you're thinking, well, why, why aren't you doing it over here? What, what, I don't care about that. I don't care about that because that's the same function and that's the same <coughs> traveling from the origin to the row. I don't care. Also, I don't care because when we define our phi, it's always from zero. It's always from zero positive. I don't care about negative. I care about this way. That's the only thing I care about. Should have answered okay with that one. So the x equals zero does two things. We said x equals zero, we got our, our circle, we got our lines, we know that our row goes from zero to two because we redefine the one function that actually matters, the function that row can actually reach. We have 0 to 2, and it lets us do the phi. You tell me right now. You tell me right now. What, uh, what's our phi doing from here to here? Our phi is going from what to what? How do you know it's pi over 4? Because you're guessing? It's OK. How do you know? If this right here is z equals y, which it is, What's the slope? One. So tangent of, well, uh, that's kind of, it would get tricky because if your slope is one, it would give you equal from both. But if your slope is different from one, you'd have to figure out your angle this way and subtract it from 90 to get that, that phi. So fortunately for us, we got an easy one. This is just, uh, slope is one, tangent of, Phi gives us one, okay, so phi is pi over four. So we're going from zero to pi over four. How about the theta? What would you do for the theta here? So z equals zero. If we do set z equal to zero, we're going to get, well here if we set z equal to zero, we get x squared plus y squared equals zero. We, we basically get the origin. That's not helping us here. If we set z equal to zero here, we get x squared plus y squared equals 4, or we get a really nice picture that tells us we have a radius of 2. And now if you're okay with that one. Now, how do I go all the way around the circle from where to where? Sure, where to two That's it. If you set z equal to zero here, you're basically just getting the center of that circle. That's all that you're getting. Okay, that's what I want you to do. I want you to set it up. Just go ahead and set it up. Did you go from 0 to 2 for rho first, 0 to pi over 4 for phi next, and 0 to pi over 2 for, for theta? Did you all do that? Yes. Yes. Two to two, five. Right there. Pi over 2. I did? 
Yeah. Okay, I'm not slipping. Did you guys hear that? No, I'm just trying to uh, Row squared, sine phi, all this stuff has to be there. This is there every single Same crap. Same crap here over here. Uh, what else has to be here? XZ. XZ. Only you're not going to put XZ. What would you put here? Good. So we need to find X. Well, whatever, whatever, whatever X is. X is. Uh, I'm going to run a room, huh? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Rho, sine, phi. Cosine, theta. Cosine. Very good for x. Cosine, theta. This is x. Z is rho. Oh, let's see. Cosine, phi. Oh, that's why you're all looking at your notes. I thought I heard something. You're flipping back and forth. Yeah. Good. Keep them with you. It's fine. I'm not going to require you to memorize that. You, you could. Wow, that was loud. Uh, you could if you kind of thought about it. How? Now these work, you could, but it's not, not necessary, you can have that. This is Z, so this piece fits right there. What's the next thing? You have R to the fourth, you have sine squared phi, you'd have cosine theta, cosine phi. Um, easy for the row, U sub for the phi, then easy for the theta, then you get Zero. <laughs> that's the answer, for real. That, that's what that would be. How could you try to fix it? What would you do? Manipulate Just this one. This is this typically works. Not all the time, okay, but most of the time. Manipulating this works. I'd go from zero to pi and multiply by two, or zero to pi over two multiply by four. That typically works for things that are symmetric. That's the idea. Show of hands if that makes sense to you. Cool. Tell you what I want, want you to do. I want you to try, I'm going to give you not a long time, and I'm going to have to work on it pretty quickly here. I want you to try to set this up. I want you to find the volume bound by that solid. My key here, that key here is work on the region. Work on the region. I want to get the re row simple, then phi simple, then theta simple. Draw what I'm telling you to do here. Try it. It's not out of your range. You guys can do it. Some of you guys are going to take to this really, really well, and you're going to start recognizing some shapes very, very easily. For instance, you can start recognizing that thing is a, it's a cone that's going like this. So the row is going to go from zero to something awkward. We'll deal with the awkwardness in a minute, but the bottom value of row is zero. It's going to happen. You should be drawing your picture. The phi, if that's a cone, we're going to be going from zero to pi over four again. That's what's going to happen for our phi. It's a full circle. We're going to be going 0 to 2 pi for our theta. That's what's going to happen. If you can visualize that, that helps. If not, that's okay. I'll give you some techniques where you don't have to do it. Right now, I want to know if you said x equals 0 and drew your picture. Did you do that? Yes, no. Yes. If we set x equals 0, we get a trace of these things on the yz plane. That's important for us to know. But you gotta put both of them on there. So what we do, this one, yeah, that's pretty, pretty not bad. Z is gonna equal the square root of y squared. We've had it before. That creates the absolute value of y. That's gonna look like this. That's what that does. Show fans feel okay with that one, you got that. Now wait a minute. There ain't no sphere. What what else can I put? Can I put anything else on here? Yeah. Yeah. It's when we draw it on the, on the YZ plane. You can put stuff on there. Well, that's Z equals 2. Now, let's look at this. 
Look carefully. This this is a tricky one. Okay, it's not hard. Look carefully. Um, it's 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 tricky, but it's not super hard. Your region is this thing right there. We want our row, just like our R did for polar. We want our row going from the origin out to O, out to a function of rho. Now, you, you, listen. This is an important example for you guys. When I start here and I travel through this, what's the bottom value for the row? Come on, what's the bottom value for this? What's the top value? Well, watch. The top value is whatever this function is, but it has to be rho equals. It can't be z equals. Yeah, that's z equals 2. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's z equals 2. Catch it. These things have to be functions of rho. They have to be. They have to be functions of rho. They have to be. So yeah, our rho starts right into the region with zero. But then when it hits this function, that function z equals two. From z equals two, we get rho equals two secant phi. That's what that is. Did you guys follow that down? It's not a surprise we get awkward things because that's a rectangular coordinate system we're trying to define in terms of spherical. We're going to get awkward stuff. That's why it works best with spheres. But we can still use it here. Did you follow that? You guys okay with that? So when we go through our region, hey, set equal to x equals zero, no problem. We start at zero, we end at two secant phi. Now, the rest is gonna be real nice. What's our what's our phi do? We use the same picture twice. What's our phi do from where to where? To where? What's our theta? Oh our theta, we gotta set z equal to zero. If we do that, well if we if we do that, we're gonna oh my gosh. What are we going to get? Wow, what, what do we get? I'm asking, for real, what do you get? You get the origin. Since your z is not zero here, what's, and you can see it, you can see it. This is a cone. It's coming up, it's intersecting a plane. What picture is the cone going to make on that plane? You have to set them equal. This is the region bound between two functions. Z equals zero, it don't work here. This is kind of a special case. We're not intersecting the xy plane. What we're doing here is we're saying, well, these two things, they intersect each other, set them equal to each other, and then we get a level curve out in space of the intersection between the cone and that plane. That's the idea. It harkens back to some of the stuff we did at the beginning. So x squared plus y squared, it's a full circle, x, y, with a radius of two, I don't care about the radius. I don't care. All I care about is that the image we're getting is a circle, because that tells me what my theta goes from it to. If all else fails, by the way, if you're like, I, I don't know how to do that, just kind of guess and put 0 to pi over 2. It's probably going to be a circle that you're getting. Does that make sense? If this makes sense, that's great. You're getting a level curve out in space. That level curve contains all of this volume that we're, we're measuring right now. Uh, we put it down on the xy plane. It's a full circle. So our theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Two fans feel all right with that one. Can you please set up the triple integral? What's our function? You don't have one because I'm asking you for volume. That's why I want to see if you can set it up. That's why I asked you every single time before we put in a function what you were getting. I knew what was talking about this one time. Don't you love this stuff? I hope you do because this is kind of your major, right? <laughs> oh, it's so sad. If you hate this stuff, please just switch majors. Like, did you say psychology? <laughs> it's a major in philosophy. <laughs> no math at all. Psychology, you need statistics and a darn lot of it.
Huh. Well, you know what? Every time I've taught you how to how to do any of this stuff, I said you set up your triple integral without worrying about the function first. You set up here by having phi last, uh, sorry, theta last, phi se second, and then rho first. And the rho is matched between zero and between two secant phi. Secant phi. Our phi is between zero and pi over four, and our theta is between zero and two pi. And you go, okay, well that's fantastic. And every single, single time I do spherical coordinates, I get this rho squared sine phi, and then I get a d rho, I get a d phi, and I get a d theta. But wait a minute, what's my function? One. Because volume, that's why I say every time, if you integrate this right now without a function inside, what do you get? Then that's what you would integrate. Could you do it? Yes. What's going to happen here? I need you to try to do this on your own, okay? What's going to happen is you're going to have a row squared. You do one third row cubed. Same stuff happens here. You plug in this for row and this for row. You end up getting a two. You basically, you get, uh, let's see, a one third out in front. It doesn't really matter. You get this two secant phi to the third power. Two secant phi to the third power. That's cosine to the negative third power. That's cosine to the negative third power of phi that you're going to end up getting in there. And the reason why you would do it, so this is after integration, this is just a little part of it, okay? I know I'm doing shorthand here, but I don't want to give it away for you. I want you to work on it. I don't want to do it for you. The reason why we choose cosine and not secant, so do you see where that's going to come from? You're going to be plugging this in. You're going to be cubing it. You're going to use secant cubed phi. Secant cubed phi is 1 over cosine cubed phi, or cosine to the negative 3 phi. We do that because that's now a u sub. That's a really easy u sub. So you do a u sub, then you have something very practical, and then you get pi over 3. I want you on your own, not now, to try to get pi over 3. That's what I want. We have one more idea and then we're done. Here's the idea. We're going to stick with the same problem. We're just going to change a little piece of it. You ready? What would happen if I want the mass of this thing? What would I need to give you? Very good. What if I told you that the mass density function is directly proportional to the square of the distance from the origin? What? Let's try it. Volume? No. Mass. Where the mass density is directly proportional. To the square of the distance from the origin. Sorry about the shorthand, I need to kind of go through this real quick. Square of the distance from the origin. Okay, hang on. Mass density. In the worst idea like ever that we had for symbols, we're going to have a mass density function that involves rho and, and a rho that involves rho. We're going to just call it f for right now. Okay, or M, or something else besides rho, so you don't get incredibly confused. So let's call our mass density function F. If the mass density is, oh, you, know, you know this, because we just went through it, that's so why we went through it. If the mass density is directly proportional, what do I need? I need a K times something. K, K times what? K times the, the square of, so it's going to be a power two, not a square root. The square of a power two. Square of the distance from the origin to the point. Huh. What gives you the distance from the origin to the point? That is the mass density being directly proportional to the square of the distance from the origin, which is rho. So if I want to change this, like, okay, does this change? No. 
If I'm trying to find the mass of that solid, the region's the same. It's just the mass density function. So let's change this just a little bit. I'd still do the same thing. I'd still have two secant, uh, two secant theta. I'd still have this. I'd still have this. I'd still have all of this stuff. In fact, they'd still almost do it exactly the same way. But right here, if this gives volume, mass needs a mass density function. And additional rho squared. Can you guys see that we, we perform this triple integral like exactly the same way? You're just going to get a one-fifth rho to the fifth plug in some stuff for that, but you're going to get a, a, a cosine to the negative fifth power. It's still a use of, it's still a use of, you just get cosine to the negative fifth power. Does that make sense? Okay. If you want to try it on your own, forty-eight pi k over five. We got one more, and we're done. One more idea. Just idea. We're going to stick with the same problem. Don't worry, you don't got to write down much. What if we wanted to find center of mass of that solid right there? True or false? That solid is symmetrical about the z-axis in every direction. So tell me something about this. And this. Zero, 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 zero. Because the mass is only directed outwards like this, yep, it's still symmetrical in every single direction. So across the x and y axes, it doesn't matter. The center of mass is still going to be zero and zero, which means the only one I really care about is this guy. Well, this is equal to <coughs> this, one of which I already have. The only other thing we have to do is find this. How would this change from this? Use what you've already done. Region doesn't change. Mass density function doesn't change. Thing we have in front of it does change. This is still 0 to 2 pi. It's still 0 to pi over 4. It's still 0 for rho, phi, and theta respectively to 2 secant theta. My bad, secant phi. It's still a uh, k rho squared, rho squared sine phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. You tell me what has to be in there. Rho sine phi. Say what? Rho sine phi. How'd you get it? Because z is equal to rho sine phi. Perfect. You, you went a little past me. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. That's exactly right. You normally put a Z there, right? But because we're in, in spherical, you go, well, this is now rho, cosine, phi. And then you get a worse in here. Well, not, not, not horrible, I guess. But you'd have a, let's see, rho to the, so you integrate, you're going to get a rho to the sixth. That's cosine to the negative sixth. Well, that's still a U sub. You can still do a U sub with this right there, and you, you're on your way. Um, if you want the answer to the, did you guys see where the, the rho cosine phi is coming from? This one gives you 16 pi k. From these two pieces, do you have enough to find the center of mass with respect to z? So I got a minute left. Okay, so <clears throat> from here we would do 16 pi k over 48 pi k over 5, just taking these two pieces together. This gives you 3. This is gone. The 5 moves to the top. You get 5 thirds. For a center of mass, 0, 0, 5 thirds. It's pretty rad. Yeah, I just pulled out rad. That's pretty cool, right? 
it's pretty rad that we can find center mass of these really kind of awkward shapes with mass density functions. That's awesome.